And hello there. Come on in. And welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I've never done a full houseplant tour before. I've only ever done room by room. So today I am gonna be taking you through literally every single plant in my collection. I realize this might be quite a long video. Editing Claire jumping in quickly. I did actually decide to break this video up into two parts in the end, just because it came out as over four hours long. So this is part one and I will link part two down below. But I asked you lot and you seem to think it was a good idea idea. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So let's let's start over here and I'll work my way around. I was going to say I have got some plants up here as well and obviously my hanging plants but I'm not tall enough to reach them so I will need to get a chair to show you them. <laughs> But this one, this one here is a little Tradescantia ivory hill cutting, which is currently propagating water. It's got some nice roots on it. I was going to say, I won't talk too much about propagations if I have got the full plant of it, because obviously then you will hear about it several times. But yeah, it seems to be doing well. It seems fairly happy there and it's growing really nicely for me. When I first put it in water, it was about there and that was only maybe a month ago. It's done really well, really well in that spot. So that's that one. And then this one's a relatively new addition. This is an Aglaonema cutlass that I got from Grow Tropicals recently. And I am such a massive Aglaonema fan, but I'd wanted this one for a while and I'd been eyeing it up on their website because just look at how beautiful those leaves are. I said it at the time when I first got it, but they're almost like cartoon leaves. Do you know what I mean? It almost just doesn't look real. I think it's just such a beautiful plant. And I think Aglaonema is just so great because it's so low maintenance. I've got quite a few in my collection, as you'll see, but this one, I, I think it's probably gonna be fine there. I did have another Aglaonema there for a little while and it seems fairly happy. They're the sort of plants that you can just kind of put, I mean, not anywhere, but they, they don't require a huge amount of light. Humidity wise, they don't seem that fussed. I mean, I'd still kind of always try and keep the humidity in my house above 60%, but they're very chilled plants, great beginner plants. And yeah, I think that one is just stunning. And then in here, this is a little Sansevieria Victoria. I think it's also, is this also known as the whale fin? I'm pretty sure that's its common name. And when I first got this one, it was only that one leaf. And as you can see, it has pushed up lots of little pups in the soil. So definitely, I would say definitely ready for a pot size up. I just haven't got around to that yet. And this is, so <laughs> this is the plants, actually I was very lucky, the one plants drama that I had when I was moving, my philodendron Brazil, which is hanging over there, which I will take you to shortly. That one got trodden on as I was moving and lots of the vines broke. And so I decided to chop and propagate them and they've rooted so quickly. I've only been moved in here for, I think just under two months and they've rooted ridiculously quickly in that time. So my hope is to pop them back up with the rest of the plant and get a really lovely, healthy, fuller plant going. But for now, they are just staying there. And then this is one of my, oh God, one of my three philodendron silver swords. I am absolutely obsessed with the silver sword. I feel like that lighting doesn't do it justice. Like, look at the color of that. Isn't that just beautiful? And I love this plant. I love this plant so much, but I didn't I didn't kind of mean to acquire three of them. This one I grew from a cutting and then my one of my friends knew that I loved the plant and she got me a cutting of it as well. I don't think she knew that I already had one. And then my other friend had a rescue one. She was like, it's not really bringing me joy. Would you like it? And I couldn't say no. So yeah, as I say, I've got three. And this plant is actually very sadly, I think pretty much extinct in its natural habitat just due to deforestation and stuff like that. So it's actually cultivated in a home environment. So I think if you feel like you can offer a philodendron silver sword a good home and take care of it properly, then then do it, keep them going. They're the most beautiful plants. And yeah, this one makes me incredibly happy. Just look, 
look at those leaves. Aren't they just beautiful? Um, but then here I've got a slightly leggy looking at the moment Alocasia Green Shield. I do love the Green Shield, but to be completely honest, I don't think this is the best spot for it. As you can see, it's got a little bit of little bit of unhappy stuff going on down there. That kind of that signals to me a watering imbalance, but I think it's I think it's fine. I have been keeping it fairly hydrated. It's just in moss at the moment, but I should probably get it into soil. It could be a nutrient related thing perhaps, but yeah, I just think its leaves are stunning. Again, I, I, I know I just literally said it about the aglaonema, but again, it, it almost just kind of like, or maybe it's not cartoon plant, more kind of alien weird plants, but I think it's just beautiful. And these leaves, these two here are kind of relatively new ones. And as you can see, they haven't got the kind of striking dark veination yet. That usually comes as the leaf matures, but despite the fact it is looking a little bit woohoo at the moment I'm I love it I think it's beautiful and I know I said I wasn't going to talk like that much in detail about propagations if I had got the full plant but the full plant of my Maranta lemon lime is not doing brilliantly so let's talk a bit about this one <laughs> so as you can see this one's currently just propagating in water and I made the decision to chop up quite a lot of this plant I think it was only last week. It just hadn't adjusted very well, I don't think, to the move. And its leaves were going very curly. I thought it might be root rot related and it wasn't. So I'm still kind of trying to get to the bottom of what the issue is there. But as I say, it's only been in water for a couple of weeks. But look, look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's already giving me little roots. So... Yeah, I also would usually say don't propagate in plastic just because, and I don't know if this is actually true, but I have heard that over time the plastic can release chemicals that are not good for your plants. And I guess that's kind of the same thing. The same thing for people where they say don't reuse the same plastic bottle again and again and again because it's not good for you. Um, but for now, I'm out of glass containers. So that's that's doing the job and it seems pretty happy there. It seems pretty happy. And then again, as we go around, you'll see quite a few variegated monsteras. This is a monstera, variegated monstera albo, and I love the albo so, so, so much. But I've I've got a very big albo, and I'm constantly I'm constantly chopping bits off her because she's sprouting left, right, and centre, and therefore I have a lot of babies. And I think this one has just got the most beautiful leaf, like look at that variegation isn't that just beautiful and it's almost it's kind of sec I love it when it's sectioned I was going to say almost half moon but I don't know they're almost like fingerprints like every single leaf is so unique and different without sounding really weird I could almost kind of get lost in its variegation <laughs> do you know what I mean there's just so many different shades of green in there and yeah, it's it's doing brilliantly. I actually did think that this spot might not be quite enough light for it. I have got Veluxes here and I have got a window there. It has actually just started to rain. It was beautiful and sunny before I started filming this. Classic British weather. Um, but not that it's showing any signs of not being happy, like the variegation hasn't browned or anything like that. It's still growing. But I'm kind of just playing it by ear. Like I feel like I've, as I say, I haven't lived here that long and I'm just finding my feet with it all and just figuring out where my plants are gonna be happiest. They're also massively acclimating to this space because the space I was in before was, well, for most of my plants was the conservatory and it just had the most fantastic light. And although the light here is good, it's it's just a big change for them. And obviously it's winter, there's fewer hours of light and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, just, just kind of tentatively seeing how they're doing. And then this is just a little spider plant clutting, a chlorophytum commissum. And it's got a little bit of algae at the bottom. I should probably change out its water, to be completely honest. I haven't changed its water in, I wanna say like two months. So I think it's definitely time, but as you can see, it has rooted really well and it's giving me some lovely new growth. I know some people can be a bit funny about spider plants because they do just kind of look like grass, but I really love them. I love the texture of them and especially next to other plants. Like again, just even from the back looking up there at my other spider plant, I just, I really enjoy the texture of them and I think it just kind of breaks things up and allows plants not to merge into one. Does that make sense? Does that make any sense at all? Like if you have lots of very, like, I don't know, very similar green plants next to each other, you almost can't appreciate them in the same way as you might be able to if there's something else I don't know. I think I'm probably waffling on about nothing, but to me that makes sense. 
Um, and then here I've got one of my, again, I've got a few, but one of my Anthurium Clarinerviums. I do love the Clarinervium. I love velvet leaf Anthuriums in general, but the Clarinervium is just the most beautiful plant. And this one, I would say it's fairly slow growing. I think its growth is very rewarding, but it's fairly slow. But it, since I've moved again, it has given me this beautiful, beautiful leaf. And the thing that I really love about Anthurium leaves is they'll come in so teeny tiny, like this one was only about that big a few days ago. And then they will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm kind of thinking that one might be even bigger than this leaf. And that is a fairly sizable leaf. So yeah, I'm very excited to watch that one grow. Oh, and then I've got some at the back here that I forgot about. So here I've just got some Scindapsis silvery Anne, which are propagating in water. Uh, I don't think they've rooted yet, so not a huge amount to say about that one. Uh, apart from I love Scindapsis, I think this one's really beautiful. In fact, is that an Argoreus or a Silvery Anne? I have a feeling that might be a combination of both. No, I lie, it's, it's a Silvery Anne. Ignore me. Um, but then here again, recent propagation. This is Epipremnum Skeleton Key. And I know this probably doesn't look like what you might think of when you think of Skeleton Key. But if you look at this leaf here, you can kind of see it's started started to form that skeleton key shape. This tends to be, these leaves like this tend to be kind of the juvenile leaves and as the plant matures, as it's able to climb and its aerial roots are able to attach onto more things, then it will start giving you those gorgeous leaf shapes. But my one, oh, it, it came off the pole, it literally outgrew the pole and it wasn't, it wasn't doing amazingly. You'll see it when we get to it, but I decided that I would just kind of take these bits, chop them up. I've stuck them in water for now, but I think I'm probably going to propagate them in moss just because I'd like to try and get the aerial roots kind of forming their own root system in the moss so that I can put that straight on a pole. That's kind of my thought process with it. So this is just for now, just uh, getting started, keeping it alive in the meantime. Um, but yeah, I think I probably will move on to moss. And then here, this is my this is my Philodendron Gloriosum that I did recently chop up. So again, as we go around, you'll see a, a few little bits of this plant. But it wasn't doing very well before. It was in it was in a a trough planter, and I loved it. But all of its growth was coming in very yellow, and it just didn't look particularly healthy. So I I made the decision to chop it up, and I am honestly so glad that I did. Since I've separated the unhealthy sections of plant from this bit. This leaf has been going so strong, it, I mean, I know plants aren't meant to be perfect, but it looks pretty perfect to me. And it has also just started giving me, oh, in fact, oh, this is the first day that the leaf has even looked like it was going to slightly unfurl. It's giving me a beautiful new leaf. And I know you shouldn't do this. I knew, I know you shouldn't peek, but, oh. Okay, no, 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 I'm not gonna do it. I'm so scared of damaging the leaf, but it is giving me some beautiful new growth. So I'm really excited about that. I know it is in just a standard upright pot at the moment. I will get it back in a trough planter because they are crawlers. They prefer to crawl along the soil than grow upwards. But yeah, I think it's beautiful. I love, I love the velvetiness of its leaves and I love how dramatic it is. Like I really do enjoy, as you can probably tell, I really do enjoy a dramatic plant and the white veination and the kind of beautiful shades of green within it. It's just, I don't know, it makes me very happy. It's a plant that I'm always looking at and I really appreciate it. So yeah. And then next to that down here, so this is a variegated monstera that I started, if you, if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you go back to my, I think probably my very first or one of my very first Instagram photos, this was a tiny, tiny cutting that I started propagating during lockdown. And to be honest, I hadn't really done that much plant propagation before lockdown. I think I'd maybe propagated some pothos, but I'd never done anything as kind of big and grand as a monstera. And so this was my first attempt at propagating. And she is doing very well. As you can see, she's very, very happy. She's giving me a beautiful, beautiful new growth. And this leaf here, I don't know if you can quite like gauge the size of that leaf, but it is just ginormous. And all of that fenestration there as well 
it's just, I was going to say secondary fenestration. I think it's, I think you call it tertiary fenestration. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's just so, so, so beautiful. And I just honestly don't think you can beat a good old Monstera Deliciosa. I think they're just the best plants. They are popular house plants for a reason. They're so easy to keep. They don't require a huge amount of light. They grow fairly fast. I wouldn't say it's my fastest growing plant, but they grow fairly fast. And when they mature, they look like this. So yeah, it's one that makes me very happy. I feel very lucky to have, I mean, I say it all the time, I feel very lucky to have all of my plants. They genuinely bring me so much joy, but this one, yeah, this one's special and it's had a journey. I feel like, I just feel like a very proud plant parent when I look at this one. Um, and then down here, so this is, this is another aglaonema and I, um, I think, so this is one I've actually forgotten the name of. I think this is an Aglaonema silver bay. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a silver bay and it's doing, I think it's doing fairly well. Oh, I thought that was mealybugs when I looked at it on camera. I think it's all right. Oh my goodness. Mealybugs are not fun and they are, oh my goodness, they are awful at this time of year. I have had so many pests. I probably still do. We'll probably see some in this video, but yeah, it's one that I just really love. Again, it just, it fills that gap really well so I don't have to look at the pot of the other plants and it is a fairly low light plant, so it is fairly happy there, but I just really like having having greenery kind of on all levels. So wherever you look, you get like a little splash of a silvery blue plant or yeah, I mean, as you can probably tell, I like having plants everywhere. Uh, but onto another aglaonema. This one is an aglaonema silver queen. And I guess actually maybe this one is more similar to the cutlass, the one that I showed you over there. It hasn't got quite such narrow leaves, but again, I'll, I'll bring it into the light so that you can probably see it because it's a little bit dark in that corner. But yeah, the colour of its leaves is just so unusual. They're just, I mean, they're almost kind of silvery blue. I, I know it's in the name, Silver Queen, but yeah, they're so silvery and they're so, like the variegation's so defined. And again, it just kind of looks like a beautiful, a beautiful drawing or something. It doesn't quite look real. And these ones, I mean, Aglaonema in general, I know you can get some very, very expensive Aglaonema, but they do tend to be very cheap to buy. And as I've already said, very hardy and easy to look after. This one, I want to say I probably bought for under £10, which I don't think is bad. And it's just, it's been in kind of every single environment where I've lived over the years and it's always seemed pretty happy. So yeah, it's a great one. And I know it's not very practical having it on the dining table, but I just think it looks nice. And if I didn't have any plants there, then I think I'd feel like it was a bit weird and a bit bare and I probably wouldn't want to sit there very much. I'm kind of thinking maybe of putting a shelf up there and putting plants on there. What do you think? Do you think that would work? Or here? Okay. I don't know. Any, any ideas, then please do let me know. But I just would like to make this area a little bit more planty. And... Then this one, to be completely honest, this one has been, as you can probably tell, a little bit neglected. I know you can neglect snake plants and they are a plant that's kind of known for being able to thrive on neglect, but this one, it just isn't looking as happy as it could be. I can't remember if I said it's a Sansevieria laurentii. In fact, I think you're now meant to say Dracaena. I think it was, what am I saying? I think it was previously classed as Sansevieria, but now it's classified as Dracaena, but I might be again, I might be wrong about that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not doing badly, but as you can see, it's just not particularly upright and its growth has kind of gone out in funny different directions because it's been shoved in many a corner over the years. And it's just, it's probably the one plant that I would say, in fact, I could say that about a few, but one of the plants that maybe you wouldn't expect looked better when I first got it, although it was smaller. It's just not looking as full as I'd like it to. So I am propagating some bits of it and I'm hoping to... Hoping to get it looking lovely and full again at some point. Um, but let's let's go here next and then let's do these ones and then I will take you along there. I haven't really thought of a structure for this video. Uh, but this is my bird of paradise. She is, she's big, she's beautiful and I absolutely adore her. I got this one as, I mean definitely not a small plant but she only had maybe four or five leaves about a year ago, maybe just over a year ago, and she's grown so much for me in that time. Like, I know I have got her on a stand, but you can just see she's, she's even without that, she's huge. 
and this leaf here and which are the one and this leaf here have been new leaves in the time that I've moved they've both popped out and unfurled and although it's not the brightest at the moment although it is winter and obviously the hours of light haven't been so much she's already giving me that new leaf there and I just noticed earlier look there's a little one waiting to come out there as well so she's really I'm, I'm just happy to see that she is happy in this spot because as I say before she was in the conservatory and I was like oh my goodness there's optimum light there is she going to be okay here and she's obviously loving life which makes me incredibly happy so yes and then moving along to the crowded area this one is a relatively new again relatively new addition to my collection which actually i'm going to leave down there because my arm is not long enough this is an anthurium bulletus and it does have that's not his actual latin name i'll put the actual latin name on the screen but i've always known it as the anthurium bulletus and i got this one from grow tropicals fairly recently and i think it's just such an unusual plant like if you watch how its leaves catch the lights they're not velvety as such but i mean they have kind of got a little like peach fuzz to them that's how i describe it peach fuzz but it's just such a magnificent plant and i feel like this isn't maybe the best representation of what it looks like when it is mature because oh my god when it's mature i mean that leaf i mean the lobing on that leaf looks more similar to how it looks when it's mature but I just love the really spaced out lobes and it's so ruffly and beautiful. And it has actually got a new little leaf coming here, which was there when I when I first got it. And you can tell that it's a little bit of damage on it. I think that's probably just from transport. So I'm hoping that it continues to do well and I'm hoping that this will be a good spot for it. I think I would trust myself to have, I would trust myself, I would trust other anthuriums to do well here. So I'm obviously just monitoring it very carefully and hoping that that's going to be the best place for it. But yeah, I mean, it's only been a few days, but so far so good. So I will just keep, keep an eye on it and hope that it continues to do well. And then back here, I've got yet another variegated monstera. As I say, you will see a lot of these when I go round. Uh, I'll just take it out so I can show you it. I won't say too much about it because I know I have already spoken about other ones. But again, beautiful balance of variegation. I love how it's variegation so splashy. And there's, I mean, with some, like, for example, my big one over there, it doesn't have that much variegation. And this one just has a really beautiful, as I say, a really beautiful balance. And yeah, it's got some lovely fenestration. And again, it seems very happy here. I actually do find the Monstera Albo to be fairly chilled. I know some people freak out when they're like, ah, variegated monstera lots of people think they're really cool and that must be a really difficult plant to look after i personally don't find it that difficult at all and there are quite a lot of plants that i do struggle with but that's for me anyway that isn't one of them so yes i really enjoy that plant and then we've got lots of propagations so again i've already showed you one this is a tradescantia ivory hill this one oh you know what has actually got little little roots starting to form. I was going to say I only chopped that one about a week ago. Um, just clear some space to get back here. But this is my Amedrium Silver. I love the Amedrium Silver, but I just haven't taken as much care of it as maybe I should have done. I did actually chop one of its leaves back uh, about a week ago again. Um, I've been saying I need to get it on a moss pole for absolutely ages because what it does if you don't put it on a pole is it sends out these kind of big tendrily bits and it just gets very leggy and obviously ideally you'd like your plant to be nice and full and healthy looking. And not that this one's looking bad. I think I probably deserve for it to be looking worse right now. It's not looking bad but it's just not looking as good as it should be in my opinion. So I've started air layering that section there to hopefully try and get some of the aerial roots going. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll be getting it, getting it onto a pole at some point soon, which I think I said in my last houseplant room tour and it still hasn't happened. Whoopsie. Um, and then another propagation. This is a Ripsalis bacchifera. And again, I won't say too much about it because I do have the full plant, but it's also known as the mistletoe cactus. And to be honest, I don't really know why I'm propagating it in water because usually for succulents, I do propagate in soil. I think I just thought that all the propagations look really nice together, which I know isn't a very good thing to say as a plant mum because it's probably not the best thing for the plant. But I mean, I'm hoping it will still root. I've never propagated that plant before, so fingers crossed, let's hope it does good things. 
Um, but here I've got one of my one of my philodendron and STIs. Both came from the same plant, which is through in my bedroom at the moment. But I'll show you that later in the video. And it is actually a little bit dusty at the moment. I could definitely do with giving its leaves a dust. But I do love the NSDI. I think again the ruffliness of its leaves and the different shades of green are just beautiful. And I think as well, usually this is a plant that maybe I wouldn't go for. I typically tend to go for plants with with quite dramatic veination, but I think even though it is all green, I think it is the ruffly bits that do it for me. And the other thing that I love about this plant is if you look at the top of the petiole there, oh, if the camera will focus, can you see how ruffly that is? And I just think that's so adorable and again, so unusual. And it's just very different, although it maybe just looks like kind of standard plant, it is very different to anything else in my collection. And it's one that just brings me a lot of joy. I'm really happy to watch her grow. I've recently got her on a decent moss pole and I'm hoping that should help to encourage some lovely new growth. It does need a water though. This pole is very dry, which again, Shouldn't have let that happen, but it, it happens so easily, doesn't it? I think definitely using the plastic backed moss poles, I just made this one, but I think that's definitely a good way because it helps to contain the moisture a little bit better. And as you'll see again, as we go around, I have done like a cup method with some of the others to keep them hydrated, but this one I have been a little bit lazy with. But yes, that is Philodendron and SDI. I'm just flitting back and forth. I've already talked about the Maranta Lemon Lime. I mean, to be honest, I am almost happy just propagating it around my house because I think its leaves are so gorgeous that I kind of want them everywhere. So that's just another little bit of that plant. Um, and then this is a Hoya Gratzelis cutting, which again, I, I chopped a bit of it up just because it was getting very, very long. And obviously I have got lots of hanging plants and when they start to come all the way down, uh, I mean, I don't mind it, but people bash their heads and it just, it all gets a little bit, a little bit messy. So yeah, I'm propagating this one in water at the moment. Again, usually for Hoya, moss is my go-to, but I'm going to do it in water this time. Um, and then this plant. So I haven't actually done an update on this plant in quite a while, but, oh, trying to move it. And actually I probably shouldn't because it's leaning up against the back of the sofa at the moment. But this is one that I, I've said before, would never have chosen for myself. I was very kindly sent it by, it was either Green Spaces ID or Arid Market. And I have a feeling it was Green Spaces ID. But as you can tell, it's just a very weird looking Hoya. It's got these gorgeous kind of, they're not exactly purple, but like purpley bits on the back of the leaves. And it's definitely not a pretty plant, that's for sure. But I think just because I've seen how much it's grown and evolved in the time that I've had it, I've kind of just fallen in love with it. And it's actually really got me into more weird house plants. Like I'm definitely not, I, I mean, I'm not necessarily like a pretty house plant person, but well, I mean, it depends what you mean by pretty, but that's typically probably not what I would say for myself. But yeah, this one's just so beefy and cool and it's little splashes of variegation here. You can't really tell, or maybe it's just because it's not as sun stressed as it was, but they are actually a gorgeous kind of purpley color. And I just think that's, that's lovely. <laughs> but yeah, it does have a very unusual growth structure and it did start to tendril fairly recently. And I've done a pretty pathetic attempt at trellising it. In fact, the trellis isn't even in the pot at the moment. I've just wound it round to hopefully help encourage some new growth. And I've just noticed that it's actually giving me some lovely little leaves, which do look quite different. Oh, leaves getting in the way. Do look quite different to how the other ones started out. So I'm interested to see how they continue to grow because yeah, these ones, the bigger ones that you see here did not look like that. And I'm thinking it's probably a change in environment that's triggered that. So I'll keep you updated with that and I'll let you know what it does for me next and whether or not I decide to chop it because if they get as big as that, the leaves, I think I will probably have no choice. But yeah, and then moving over to this one. So this is Again, slightly, slightly leggy at the moment, but Alocasia Zabrina, it's only got three leaves. I did have to give a couple of them a chop back because they were yellowing and there was an issue with root rot that I also had to resolve. I say resolve, I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed that it is now resolved. It was only, I think about, well, it was actually right before I moved. So about two months ago that I treated this plant for root rot and I haven't lost any other foliage since. So yeah, I'm playing it by ear, being very careful with the watering, making sure to monitor the roots, all that sort of stuff. 
Uh, but I love the Zabrina. I think it's stems or, I mean, do you call these stems or petioles? They kind of have their own individual long stem. I don't know what it's called. Um, but they're just so unusual and so dramatic. And they almost look like something out of Avatar. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like they just look very magical and mystical and not, I mean, I know plants can surprise you, but not what you would maybe expect from a plant if you weren't weren't a planty person or into weird plants but yeah it's just a really robust on the whole alocasia and it's been fairly easy to look after again I know these ones can be a little bit dramatic but I think just because their leaf structure is quite I don't know how to describe it I guess it's quite leathery like some alocasia are very very delicate very sensitive and although I know this one can be prone to tantrums I think maybe just because it is so physically robust it is slightly more robust. That could just be me being silly, but in my mind, that's that's what I think it is. Uh, and then I've got a Syngonium elbow cutting here. Again, not rooted. I only cut this one very recently. I'm actually in the process, and I'll speak about this when I get to my big plants, but I am in the process of completely chopping this plant up just because I've fallen out of love with it. I do, I can appreciate that it's lovely, but it's it's not the plant for me so lots of propagating going on there uh, and then a philodendron brancianum cutting again i'm constantly chopping and propagating this plant i i love it but i'm just not that attached to it and they always make nice gifts for people as well because they look very unusual so i've usually got a few propagations of that on the go uh, and then one more propagation so I can get to the space I need to get to. This is a Hoya SP Bertone AF. Again, I have got the full plant and no, I think those are just area roots. I actually thought it had started to root already. Um, but yeah, I love that Hoya, but I'll talk about the mother plant when it comes up in this tour. <laughs> and this one is a Philodendron Golden Dragon. And in fact, I'll get it out of the teacup that it's currently in so that you can see it properly. But this is another one that I don't think I would have chosen for myself, to be honest. Oh, hello, Yoli. She's up. Hello. Good girl. I don't think I would have chosen it for myself. Not for any particular reason, just it's, I don't know, it's not the sort of plant that I think I would usually go for. It doesn't do a huge amount for me. Uh, and I did actually chop and propagate quite a lot of it. And I gave away quite a few cuttings. And then... I propagated the top cutting with the plan of giving that away as well and it started doing this and giving me the most beautiful growth and such an unusual shape as well and I've kind of fallen in love with it again so I'm glad that I didn't get rid of this oh hello hello I'm glad I didn't get rid of this and I'm definitely falling more and more in love with this plant every day I think it's just beautiful and I think its leaves are so they look so conditioned now and I think that's probably the thing when I first got it if you watch that video, then you'll know it was it was very kind of rough and I guess just maybe not as healthy as it could have been. But I feel like I've given it quite a lot of TLC over the last few months. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it's doing now. So yeah, fingers crossed it will continue to grow well for me. I know I do probably need to pot it up. I don't think I actually showed you the roots on it, but it's got some pretty crazy roots now and it's probably ready to be potted. So that is on my list of things to do. And next to it is my Calathea Zebrina. And oh my goodness, I love this plant so much. I absolutely love the Zebrina. The Zebrina was, I think, one of the first Calatheas I got after having a very bad experience with Calatheas. And don't get me wrong, I know Calatheas can be absolute drama queens. But this one, again, in my experience, I know it differs for different people, but this one hasn't been too bad obviously it's not it's not perfect there are some bits that are kind of brown around the edges as you can see and it's also very dusty i do need to give this one a very good dust over but i just really appreciate its foliage i think it's just so striking i love the balance of the dark and the light and it's also a plant that i find that even with like quote unquote rare plants that i've got in my collection when people come into my house they're always like oh my goodness that plant's amazing what's that and i'm like it's a Calathea. It's really, you can pick it up pretty much anywhere. Like it's, it's just a really beautiful, more, more common plant. Like you, I think I found this one in the garden center and you can pick them up, I think for maybe five or six pounds nowadays. But yeah, as I say, it's not perfect and it does need some attention, but it makes me very happy. And I think it gave me more courage to try again with Calatheas when I was a little bit unsure about them and I was scared I was going to kill all of them. So yes, thank you, plant. 
Uh, and then two more little propagations. This is a Hoya crinkulate cutting. Again, not a lot to say about it. It's not doing much for me yet, and I will get onto the mother plant and I'll talk more about that one. And the same for this little ZZ cutting, which again, not a lot to say about that, but I do love the mother plant and I'd love to potentially try and propagate it. Hence why I'm trying to do that. Well, that was a weird sentence. Um, and then lastly, on this on this little table unit thing is the Philodendron Jose Bueno. And oh my God, this plant. Just look at that leaf. Isn't that the most beautiful thing in the world? I think it's just stunning. And I got this at the plant swap, which was probably a good few months ago now. And it was a mid cutting. And I don't think it started doing anything growth wise yet but it has got some beautiful roots. And I, although I'm kind of tempted to pot it up now, oh, there's roots at the bottom. Although I'm kind of tempted to pot it up now, I think I am gonna wait till spring and then its environment will just be a little bit more stable. As I say, all of my plants I think are still, although it's been a couple of months, are still in the process of adjusting. And this is one, especially when it's only just got one leaf, I am not prepared to lose. I know I should probably have it over closer to the window. It does get some light from the Veluxes, but maybe not as much as it could be. I'm just scared about the tail because every plant that I put over by the window, I have to accept the fact that it might get tailed. And this one, I just wanted it for such a long time. I'm not prepared to take that risk. So while it's not giving me any grief and whilst it's still seeming happy and the root system is forming, I'm leaving it where it is and I'm hoping for the best. So here I've got, I mean, it, it doesn't look great. I mean, it doesn't look bad by any means, but as you can see, it's just very bald at the bottom. I've got one of my fiddly figs and the other one, my bigger one, I actually left for my mum when I moved house. It was one of the plants that she was like, oh my goodness, I really love it. And I, just, I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to have space for it in my new place. So she's got it. And as far as I know, it's doing well. This little one, it's, as I say, it's, it's doing okay. It's giving me new growth and I cannot complain. Like I know these ones can be absolute drama queens, but the space at the bottom is just where Yoli's tail, this was at one point down in my bedroom and me and Yoli, well, I mean, she had, if you haven't been watching my channel for a while, me and my dog basically had to be in the same room together for a very long time because she is bad with everything. She's not bad really, but she would just have to be with me a lot. So yes, we were down in my room with lots and lots of plants. And every time she got excited, the tail would whack something. And I think because fiddly figs can just be like, oh my goodness, no, it would just be like, I'm going to drop a leaf in protest. And it did, it dropped lots of them. So it's got a very bare stem at the bottom, but I am very happy that it has started to give me some new growth. And again, this has been in the time since I've moved and I'm quite surprised about this because they do really like bright indirect light. And although this, I guess, is kind of bright and direct light here, the hours of light that it's been receiving are, in in my opinion, not kind of up to, I was going to say up to scratch, not what you would expect it to receive when it wants to push out new growth, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm happy that it's doing that. And I do just love its foliage. I mean, I know it's called the fiddle leaf fig because I think it's shaped a bit like a fiddle and you can see why. I think its leaves are just, I don't know, if you've ever felt one or if you've got one, then you'll know, but they're they're really unusual feeling. They almost feel like like a dead plant. So like they don't feel very alive. The new growth does. It's lovely and soft. But when they harden up, I guess just like very, they can kind of, can you hear it? Very tough cardboard. But I don't mind it. I think it's it's shiny and it's beautiful. And I'm very happy that mine is currently doing well. So, so yeah, I, we seem to be around this side of the room now. So let's go to this one. So this is my my large variegated monstera. And as I've already said, she's not particularly variegated. I don't particularly mind that. I just love the structure of her growth. And I wasn't actually gonna chop this plant. I did end up chopping her, but I wasn't gonna chop this plant. I was gonna let her just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. But I think she got to about eight foot at one point. No, I think it was actually more than that. I think it was more like 10 foot. It was, it was absolutely crazy. But at the time where I was living, I didn't have high enough ceilings to be able to just let her climb. And she was kind of pushing against the wall and wasn't doing amazingly. So I made the decision to chop her. And you know what, again, this is the second plant in this video now that I've said that about, but it has been the best decision I was gonna say that I've ever made. Probably not the best decision I've ever made. But one of the best, one of the better planty decisions that I've made, because since I've chopped her, you can see up here, the stem, like the internodal spacing is quite big. She's quite stretched out. 
she looks nice but she just doesn't look very full and down here since I've chopped her all of the auxiliary buds at the bottom have popped and they've given me so much new growth like if you look there for example that that growth point wasn't even there before and it's just sprung out all of this new growth and in fact this leaf this um section here oh it, it is I didn't even notice this it's starting to give me another new leaf which is a little bit crazy because obviously I can train that probably onto the pole but mm, but I might end up chopping her again maybe I don't know what should I do should I do that I have got a lot of variegated monstera cuttings and that is partly because she's sprouting out growth here there and everywhere and here as well <laughs> every time I open my fridge I'm like oh sorry leaf but maybe I will continue to chop her I don't know, this is just me kind of thinking out loud now, but I'm really happy with how she's doing. I think she just looks glorious there. And because now I do live somewhere with fairly high ceilings, if I want to let her continue to climb, then I absolutely can. There's no reason that I can't. And also her moss pole. I did make a video, I can't remember if I made a video for my main channel or my Patreon on the moss pole. I have a feeling it was over on Patreon, but this is just a half length of gutter and I've just put some wire from being q over it stuffed it with moss and then i mean i've got a beer can on top at the moment but i usually use a water bottle i just fill a water bottle put a hole in the lid and i just let that drain on down so that it hydrates the pole keeps the aerial roots happy allows the plants to grip on form its own little root system and yeah it seems to be working fairly well so that's that one and then another another monstera that might just be my pride and joy, in fact it definitely is, is my Monstera dubia. This plant just absolutely blows my mind and I've got to say I have cheated a little bit for this video so she, although she looks absolutely beautiful there, she doesn't actually spend much time there because uh, if it had, if it was just a little bit brighter in here and maybe come summer I'll be able to do that but it's just not ideal light for her. So usually I kind of push her up against the window there like those two other plants are. And then she gets kind of optimum light and is is happier. So yeah, I've put her in her display position today so that you can see how glorious she looks there. But that is, that's not realistic. She doesn't live there all the time. Um, but yeah, I got this one from Hutch House Plants maybe about five or six months ago now. I think it's probably close to six months. And she was about that big when I first got her. And as you can tell in the time that I have had her, she's just done the most incredible things for me. And she's starting to fenestrate as well, which is just really, really blowing my mind. Like when that leaf first came out, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I've, I've won the lottery. It just, it felt like such a huge achievement. And I've never seen a fenestrated dubia in person. I've only ever seen pictures of them. So... Yeah, I felt incredibly proud when that started to happen. And if you look at her most recent leaf, which hasn't actually even finished sizing up yet, it's got multiple points of fenestration. So yeah, I'm just so intrigued to see what she's going to continue to do. She has got a new leaf there. Can we have a peek? Oh, no, Claire. Okay, learn from your lessons. Don't have a peek. Okay, so there's nothing to see there yet, and I don't want to mess with it too much. But I am obviously going to have to extend her, extend her plank very soon because she is growing so quickly. So again, since I've moved house, that, that, that and that have all been new leaves. And interesting actually, that was the leaf that started unfurling while I was moving. And you can actually, her growth has been very consistent, like very even, very consistent. And when I moved house, her next new leaf, as you can see, that is a gap. And I personally don't think that's a coincidence. I think that was her probably responding to environmental changes and probably getting used to slightly lower light and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's that's the gap where I can always tell where I moved house. But what I'm thinking going forward with this plant is although I would love to let her just climb all the way up because I do have the space to be able to let her do it, I just think if I want to continue to achieve that beautiful, big, fenestrated growth, I'm probably going to have to chop her just so that I can fit her over by the window. So yeah, I'm currently thinking I'm either going to air layer her pole and then chop her, or I'm going to add an extension, probably quite similar to this moss pole here, on top of there so that her root system can start to form in that. Because I have probably three or four times tried to propagate Monstera dubia, and I've failed every single time. I think unless you unless you are able to slightly root it before taking it off its plank, 
it is it's near impossible in my experience anyway if anybody has any tips or tricks for this plant in terms of propagation then please do drop me a comment down below i would be so grateful i really don't want anything to happen to this plant and to be completely honest i don't even want to chop this plant but i yeah i feel like i don't really have a choice if i want her to be healthy so so yes, and then I've got two little ones, well not so little one, and little one down here. I've got my Raphidophora tetrasperma, which this one, so I think this one is a non-tissue culture one. My friend Emma also has a Raphidophora tetrasperma, and we actually, we spoke about this recently, but hers have got such a different leaf structure. Like, if you look at mine, they're really quite, like, small, compact they they kind of look like they've been cut with a cookie cutter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And hers are, are a lot more varied. Some of them are very long. Some of them are very wide. Some of them I don't think are fenestrated at all. And we both just were kind of like, that's so interesting. Maybe you take a cutting of my plant and I'll take a cutting of your plant and we'll see how they respond differently in different spaces. But after doing a little bit of digging and asking you guys, we established that that is probably because this one is non-tissue culture and hers is tissue culture and therefore they grow slightly differently. But mine is mega, 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 mega bushy and she's actually not even on a moss pole at the moment. She's just staked up with a bamboo cane. So again, if I want to encourage some healthier growth, I should probably get her on something a little bit, a little bit better for her aerial roots because as you can see, she's just kind of going whoop here and her growth is actually getting smaller, which is always a sign that a plant's not completely happy. And I've got some browning as well, only a little bit. Like, I know it's probably, I know it's nothing to worry about. I'm not going to be that dramatic. But I think, yeah, I think I should probably get her on something a little bit more substantial. And here I've got a little Calathea rosiopicta. And this is one that my friend picked up for me quite recently uh, in a garden centre. He just was in a garden centre and was like, hey, they've got houseplants here. And obviously I was like, you must show me them. Please FaceTime me. Let me see the plants. And I used to stock, back in the day when I had my shop open, I used to stock Calathea rosiopicta and I thought it was beautiful. I think it's also known as Medallion Calathea. And yeah, I just, I thought it was gorgeous. But I was quite scared of Calathea at that point because I just hadn't had a very good time with them. So again, I was like, okay, you're going to have to get me a plant because I've seen them now. And I decided to go for the Calathea roseopecta and I think it's gorgeous. I think the back of its leaves are so pretty. I love the purpliness. I can kind of, I'm detecting there might have been some pest activity here. I actually can't even see any, oh, whoa. Oh no, that's me. Looks like spider mites. Oh god, spider mites on a calathea are one of the worst things I think that can happen in life. So let's, let's just put this one down here for now. I was saying recently about isolating plants when you've got so many plants. It's a very difficult thing to do. And I do currently have another plant with spider mites that is in my bathroom, but my bathroom doesn't get any natural light. So yeah, okay, I'm glad I caught those now. Um, but beautiful plants, relatively, I'm not gonna say relatively easy to look after, can be an absolute nightmare and is a magnet for spider mites, but looks very pretty. Oh dear, okay, we will deal with you later. But then, oh, damn it, that's what I meant to do. I was going to water my ferns before this video because, as you can see, they're looking a little bit sorry for themselves. These ones, so I've got a bird's nest fern, a staghorn fern, and a crocodile fern up there. And when they're hydrated, they look really perky and really, really gorgeous. I mean, that one doesn't look so bad. But as you can see at the moment, they're just looking a bit floppy and they're not looking great. So the way I water them, I've just basically I've man mounted them on pieces of wood there and I just lift the piece of wood off the wall, dunk them down into some lukewarm water with a bit of fertilizer, let them feed and then they will, when I, when I kind of let them drain and put them back up on the wall, usually they will perk up very quickly. But that is something that I completely forgot to do. So let's, let's move on from those ones. Uh, let's do the top of the cabinet first before I get into the cabinet because, oh my goodness, my cabinet is crowded. But here I've just got a variegated ivy. This one, I'm not, to be honest, I really love the texture of it, but it's one that I'm not loving at the moment. I don't know why. Ivy, obviously, it grows everywhere in the UK. It is, 
You would have thought an incredibly hardy plant, but this one has been giving me grief for such a long time. And it was, when I first got it, it was so full. It looked really beautiful. And now, I mean, kind of no matter where I put it, it's got like, there you can see like little crispy dead leaves and bits are always coming off it. Oh, and there. And I just am finding it a little bit of a challenge. I've tried it in so many different spots. I know you're probably looking at that and thinking, well, that's got no light. Of course, it's not going to do well there. I've tried it everywhere. I tried it at different places at my mum's house. I had it down on my bedroom. I had it in the conservatory. I've tried not watering it much. I've tried watering it probably too much. And it just doesn't seem to be my friend right now. So although, as I say, when I stand back and I look at it, I'm like, oh, you know what? I do really like it. When I get up close, I'm just like, okay, what shall we do with you next? So yeah, that's a that's a, a challenging plant for me at the moment. Uh, and then the one just behind it is my Syngonium Batik. And I've, so recently, I'm, I'm not gonna say about this plant because I do love this plant, but I have really, ooh, I have really gone off Syngoniums. I can't exactly explain why they're just not doing it for me that much at the moment. And this is one that really is. This is one that I've kept in my collection and I feel very lucky to have. I just think its leaves are very delicate while still being quite dramatic. Like it's got that lovely, lovely white venation and yeah, I think it's I think it's beautiful. And it's another one that's incredibly adaptable. Like I haven't put a grow light back there in that corner. And although it does get it does get kind of I guess medium light. Well medium to low light, I would say. I wasn't sure whether or not it would be happy there. And besides the fact it is a little bit stretched at the top, it seems fairly happy. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it there for the time being. I'm thinking at some point I might also run a grow light along that, like the back of that beam there facing down there so that those plants can get a bit more light. But for the time being, doesn't seem doesn't seem to be complaining too much. So yeah, that's, that's how it is. That's, that is how it's staying for the time being. And then my big, I mean, big, massive philodendron scandens, Hartley philodendron. This one is huge. It's absolutely huge. And I have chopped and propagated this plant quite a lot. And I'm thinking now is probably the time to do it again because it's got back to the stage where it's literally trailing along the floor again. And I love having it here. I think it adds a lot of kind of dimension to the room. And I love the plantiness just kind of flowing up onto the ceiling. But it does need a haircut. Nevertheless, as I say, it's it's a very easy plant to look after. It's, I would say, another great beginner plant and very hardy. I want to not jinx things here, and I probably will, but I also want to say not that prone to pests. Oh, I hope I haven't just jinxed that. But for a plant that's got a lot of foliage and there's a lot of kind of quite compact, smushed together foliage, I have never had to deal with pests on this plant. And I think if I did, it would be an absolute nightmare because it's got so many leaves and just so much area to cover. I would not enjoy having to do that. I am also using predatory mites at the moment. I've got them pretty much everywhere in my house right now and you don't see them at all, but they are just a, a really great alternative natural method to pest treatment. I know I've banged on loads about like Provanto and stuff like that in the past, but I'm trying to do things a lot more naturally nowadays as I figure out more stuff about soil and whatnot. So, so yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. And I don't know if that's why it hasn't had pests or maybe it's just not that susceptible, but, but yes. And then I just, I also realized I missed one. I, I missed my misto. This is a Calathea misto. And this one actually doesn't usually go here. This one usually goes in my bedroom, but, oh, sorry, also those were my knees clicking. If you just had that, very nice. Um, this one usually goes in my bedroom and I actually just brought it through here to water it and to give it a prune, which by the looks of it, I did not do. No, nope, it needs a little bit of a trim back. Um, but I brought it through here to water it, put it by the door so I'd remember to take it through. And then I was just like, you know what? I quite like having a plant there. So it seems, I mean, I say it seems fairly happy. It's only been there for a couple of days. I like it in that spot and Yoli hasn't seemed to want to claw it. So... So I'm leaving it down there and I have to find something else to go in my room at some point. Um, oh, also, I was going to say, if you've got this far into the tour and you're a planty person, then this is the fertilizer that I use. And oh my goodness, I've banged on about this stuff before. It's liquid gold leaf and it is just the most fantastic thing. I use it for literally all of my house plants and I'm still fertilizing most of them at this time of year. 
I do give this stuff so much credit. <laughs> it also just doesn't harm soil microbes and it's just, it's honestly fantastic stuff. I've raved about it a lot and I also have a discount code for it. So I'll put that in the description box below if anyone's interested. Ah, but then I guess it's cabinet time next. And although I could just stick the camera in there, I kind of feel like I should take some stuff out and, oh, the table, the table. Um, this, again, some little propagations. I've got, uh, what's this? Hoya Croniana Super Silver, Hoya Bella, and some, I don't know if this is actually a true Gratzelis or not, but supposedly Hoya Gratzelis. Um, but yes, they're just currently propagating in water. But I'm going to take some things out of my cabinet so that you can see it a little bit better. And then I will show you everything that is in there. So I've taken some things out because, as I say, it was very crowded before and it feels very empty looking at it now, but it would have been hard to properly show you the plants without getting them out. So I'm going to start down here. So this is my Philodendron Painted Lady and I really love this plant. I know I've said many a time in my videos that I am not a massive fan of colourful house plants and this one... I, I've, again, I'm repeating myself, but this one for me just has a really perfect balance. It's got the gorgeous kind of splashy yellow variegation on its leaves and the new growth comes in pretty much like bright yellow, almost highlighter yellow. And it's obviously got these gorgeous pink stems, which I feel like the lighting in here now, now that it's chucking it down outside, is not doing it justice. But it also is still very much... Yoli, what are you... Oh, nice. It's still very much a green plant and I do on the whole like my plants to be green. Someone recently said in the comments they like colour outside and greenery inside and I was like, ah, I feel exactly the same. That is how I feel about my whole collection. So yeah, I just really like how it's growing for me. I am happy that it's starting to attach to the moss pole as well. As you can see at the bottom here, it has got some really nice roots and I hope that continues as it gets bigger and bigger because I know this one is quite a fast grower and while it's still able to fit in my cabinet, I'm just kind of making the most of it and really, really hoping that it's, it does beautiful things for me very soon because I don't know if you've seen a big one of these. They are, they are beyond stunning. I love it how it is, but I can't wait for it to grow a little bit for me. And then this one, I, I am, I'm a little bit lost with this Hoya. So I got this as a Hoya Macrophylla Red, and I'll probably put that on the screen, but I don't think it is. Uh, as it's kind of started to grow and develop, I, I mean, firstly, its leaves aren't even red in the slightest, not even on the back, but the shape of its leaves, like that one's kind of macrophylary, but I think it's probably a little hybrid of some sort. And I love it. I think it's beautiful and I love the way that it's growing for me. Granted, I do need to get it on a trellis because it's starting to do its tenderly thing and I know that that's what it wants, but I think it's a really beautiful plant. I just love Hoyas so much and I feel like I haven't shown you that many Hoyas in this video as of yet. I do have a lot of Hoyas. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's really gorgeous. It is a relatively slow growing Hoya. I mean, Hoyas can be quite slow growing. I've got some that are faster than others. And I would say this one is probably on the lower end of the scale, but it's really lovely. I really like it. And it seems very, very, very happy in the cabinet. So that is where it is staying for the time being. And then I've got a little philodendron sodoroy here, which, oh my goodness, I love the sodoroy so much. And this is another one that I'm so excited to watch grow. I cannot wait until this one gets lovely and big because I've got the philodendron sodoroy af and that one's a crawler. And although I like crawling plants, they take up a lot of room. And when you do have to chop and propagate them, you've got to get yet another trough planter. And I was eyeing up the true Sodoroy for ages and then I finally caved and I got one a couple of months ago when I first moved in here. And although currently, in fact, yeah, currently it's looking almost exactly like the Brantianum, when it does get bigger, its leaves mature and it just looks stunning. So I'm very excited for that. And again, Cabinet seems to be treating it very well. Cabinet, if you don't know, Cabinet just offers like a really great balance of light, heat and humidity. And for a lot of tropical plants, obviously that just mimics their natural environment. It allows them to grow nice and full and quickly and it just keeps them really happy. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Really, really excited about it. 
And then here I've got the Philodendron Parezo Verde. And so I, I wanted this plant for a very long time before I actually got it. And I have to say, this is probably one of my, I mean, in terms of like climbing upright, this is one of my fastest growing philodendrons, not in comparison to like the trailing one that I showed you, but this one's been so quick. I got it maybe five, well, I got it in September. When was that? September, October, November, December, January. Yeah, five months ago. And it only had a couple of leaves, at which I did actually end up losing, but it was only about that big. And it's getting really quite large now, but I know the thing with this plant is that its variegation can be a little bit temperamental. And from what I know and what I've been told, again, light, heat and humidity really affect it. Like if you look at that leaf there, it's got beautiful, splashy, kind of like squashed frog variegation. And these leaves here don't look to really have any. So I think it is down to the genetics of the plants, but also... I'm now a little bit scared to take it out of the cabinet just in case it means that the variegation's never coming back. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing, but but yeah, it's growing very quickly. And what I think I'm trying to say is it's not going to be able to fit in the cabinet for much longer. So yeah, it's beautiful. It needs to be on a moss pole as well. As you can tell, it's got crazy aerial roots that are literally crying out for something to climb. So I do need to get it on a pole. But for now, it looks it looks healthy. I'm happy with how it's growing. Keeping my fingers crossed for a little bit more variegation. But yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it very much. And then I've got a little philodendron tortum. I do now have two tortums in my collection. I got another one in a rescue box the other day, which I'll show you shortly. But I just, I've said already in this video, but I am obsessed with texture in plants, like different leaf shapes, different textures, different shades of green, like all of that for me, just, it helps create that beautiful jungle feel, which I, I just really want. I want to live in a jungle. It makes me very happy. <laughs> and this one, yeah, this one's just very unique, very unusual. And it's, I mean, actually is a relatively fast grower. When I first got this plant, it was a lot smaller. And if I look back on the video where I did the unboxing of that then, or the, the plant swap brother with my friend Emma, it was a lot smaller and it definitely wasn't as full or mature, but I haven't noticed it growing in the same way as I have some of my others, just because it's, I don't know, it's growth... It doesn't always make a massive impact on the plant, if that makes sense. I don't look at it and I'm like, oh, it's got a new leaf. I'm just kind of like, oh, maybe it looks a bit bigger five months on. But yeah, nevertheless, I do really love it. And then we come to this one. This one, this has actually got something very exciting going on with it at the moment as well. But this one is one of my favorite plants in my collection. This is the Philodendron Code 69686. I think it is just... The most unusual, beautiful, wonderful plant. I feel very lucky to have it. And I just like the lobing. Like, look at that. It's like bunny's ears. It's just, it's just so gorgeous. And I'm loving the way that it's growing for me. But this is the exciting bit. It's actually flowering for me. Obviously, the flower hasn't opened yet. And I'm kind of, I don't really know what to do about this. I've never seen a philodendron code 69686 ever flower before. And they obviously, I mean, as with any philodendron, they do usually have to be quite well established and mature for that to happen. And I guess mine is. I didn't really think it was at that stage yet. I'm very tempted to try and cross pollinate it with one of my other philodendrons. Like my white princess over there is currently flowering. My pink princess has been flowering as well. But then at the same time, I don't want to risk wasting the energy reserves of this plant. I would quite like it to just continue to grow for me. So, so I don't know. But also the thought of chopping that flower back just doesn't make me very happy at all. So I think I'm going to wait for it to open. Philodendron flowers actually only open for one night. And if you miss that window, if you do want to pollinate, if you miss that window, then you will have to essentially wait for a whole new flower to form, which can take, I mean, depends on the stage and state of the plant, but sometimes it can take years. So yeah, I have had a couple that have flowered and opened for me quite recently. And I just find it so fascinating when that happens. It's just nature doing its thing and then the flower closes back up again and it's just amazing. But yeah, I'll definitely wait for this one to open and yeah, I just wanna see it open. I wanna see what it looks like, but I think I probably will be chopping it off after that. That or collecting some pollen in the hope that another philodendron flower opens in the next few days because the pollen doesn't store well. It's not like anthurium pollen that you can keep for ages. It only stores for about a week. So. 
So yes, but that is the code 69686. I am in love with it and I think it's beautiful. Um, ah, and another one that I think is probably up there at the top of my list, my Anthurium Warroquianum. This, oh, my queen Anthurium. She is just apple of my eye. She's beautiful. I am so grateful to finally have a healthy one of these because the first time I got one, I got it from a dodgy seller and it came with awful root rot and lots of issues and it unfortunately didn't make it. So I think I waited a good kind of eight, nine months before I got another one of these, but I picked this one up at the Rare Plant Festival in Leeds earlier in the summer. And since then, she's given me this magnificent new leaf, which I think has probably pretty much hardened off now. I think maybe she's she might have a little bit more growing to do. You can see it's not quite as solidified as these ones here, but oh, um, I like the, the size of that. I don't know if you can probably gauge the size of that leaf. It's just crazy. And again, dramatic plant, lovely dark leaves, very velvety, white venation, but also the length of the leaves as well. She's just so unusual. And yeah, I adore her. I adore her. I know I say that about all of my plants, but this one, I really mean it. She's 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 very beautiful. Um, and then coming round here. So this this one again, I will put Anthurium Silver Blush on the screen. I was sold this, or I was sorry, I was sent this as a silver blush. This was again very kindly sent to me by Green Spaces ID. I don't think it's a silver blush. <laughs> or if it is, it looks very different to my other silver blush that I've got in my bedroom. This one, like if you look at its leaves down there. It has definitely got silver blush vibes, but they're very long. And then leaves like this, which I think actually it feels like it's hardened off, look totally different. So again, I think it probably is a hybrid of some sort. I don't know. I almost wondered if it was cross doriaki or something like that. But again, as I say, the length. So I can't quite work it out. And if anybody has any theories do let me know because it confuses me. That's a lovely little new leaf coming there as well. And that's actually the first new leaf it's given me in months. It is definitely a slow grower and it's probably partly because I've got it in terracotta. I should probably take it out of terracotta because it's an epiphytic plant and it doesn't tend to enjoy terracotta, but I have no idea why I did that. Uh, and then finally on the table, and this is another one that I got in the rescue box. This is a Caladium Hilo Beauty. And yeah, got it in the rescue box from Grow Tropicals. And it arrived looking literally perfect. But I know Caladiums firstly do sometimes go dormant or do very often, sorry, go dormant over the winter months. But also the temperature has been a little bit like that. And for that reason, I think coming into a new environment has just kind of made it go, oh my God, what's going on? And it's starting to yellow. I mean, it has still got new growth coming up, which I think is pretty amazing for this time of year. But I do think that I'm probably going to have to give it quite a good chop back because obviously it goes without saying these leaves are not going to be bouncing back. So yeah, I, I'm also not usually a massive Caladium person. And I know this one, I think, was previously classified as Alocasia. Oh, sorry, I just did a very big whistle through my teeth as I said Alocasia. But it was previously classified as Alocasia. Hello again. Um, and that's, I don't know if that's why I was like, oh, you know what, I, I would get one of these. Caladium just don't usually do it for me. I think I've had so, I think I've just over exhausted the Caladium thing. I went through such a Caladium phase and now I'm just a bit like, nah. But this one, but this one I think could be the one to change my mind. So yeah, we'll see how it gets on and I will, I'll let you know how it goes. But then actually going into the cabinet. So this is an Ikea Millsbow cabinet that I've got here. And my friend Emma picked this up for me secondhand on a Facebook group. And I just think it's gorgeous. I really love it. And it keeps my plants happy. And I have done a full uh, cabinet setup video with Emma as well on my YouTube channel. So I will, I'll link that in the clickable eye up here, wherever that is, um, if you fancy watching that. Uh, but the grow lights I use in here, so I, I do have quite a few different types of grow lights, but these ones are mother grow lights, and I've said it before, these are my favourite grow lights ever. And I've tried a lot of grow lights, 
Um, these ones, again, I have a discount code for these, so I will link that and the fertilizer discount code down below. Um, but these ones have just done the, like, the best things for my plants. At my old place, when I was living down in the basement room that I was in, I had pretty much no natural light whatsoever. And I set up a grow shelf with mother grow lights and my plants gave me the most insane growth, better growth than some of them had given me in real sunlight, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, I have a lot of faith in them and everything in here, touch wood, has been kept very happy. And if it hasn't, chances are it's probably down to me. So yeah, I would highly recommend them. Uh, and then, so starting here, this one, so this one I think, I mean, I definitely need to extend its moss pole, but I also think I... I'm potentially going to chop up soon. This is an Anthurium SP Limon, and I mean, its leaves are beautiful. As you can see, they've got so much, so much texture to them. They're almost, almost quite scaly, like dragon scaly. That's what pops into my mind with this plant. Um, but they're also just such a beautiful bluey, silvery colour, and I am just in love with bluey, silvery plants. I think. They just look so magical and this one, I, I haven't, I hadn't really seen this plant before. Again, this is another one I got at the Rare Plant Festival in summer. I'd never seen it before and I actually went into the festival with an idea of the plant in my mind that I wanted to get. And I ended up going away from that wishlist plant when I saw this one and getting this one instead. And I got it as just a one leaf little plant and it grows like crazy. And anthuriums do have a reputation of being quite slow. This one, I cannot say the same for. Um, but yeah, as I say, I do really need to extend that moss pole because it is a climber and it does need to have something to attach to. And without that, I probably won't get much kind of bigger mature growth. And its leaves, when they do mature, look so bizarre. Like they look so weird. They kind of split into three sections. And I don't really know how I feel about that, but I also feel like I should be doing the best thing for the plant. So I must do that soon. But as you can see down here, it's got some crazy aerial roots and it has properly kind of gripped on and attached itself to the pole. So if I wanted to chop and propagate this plant now, I probably wouldn't have to actually like put the cuttings in anything. I mean, this section here I'm talking about, I would probably be able to just chop them very carefully, remove them from the moss pole or just plant the moss pole straight into new soil and it would grow for me. I don't want to chop it, but I don't know, the growth down the bottom here, as you can see, this leaf is turning. The growth down the bottom here, just when it gets to this point, seems to just drop. And that's what's happened with these these leaves down here. That's why it's so bare. And I don't really know why that is. Again, if anybody has any theories, let me know. I feel like it is still getting relatively good light. Uh, I don't really know what that's about. But, but yes, I will experiment and I'll let you know how that goes. And then I've got some cuttings back here. So I've got, as you can see, they are rooting really nicely. I've got um, some purple passion plant cuttings. This was just taken from my friend's plant. I've already said I'm not a massive fan of colourful plants, but the purple passion plant, I think because its leaves are actually green and it's just like, if you see there where my finger is, it's just when it catches the light, its little hairs are purple, so it makes it look purple. So it's almost just got kind of a purpley shimmer to it, wherever, like whichever position you look at it from, which I think is really cool. Uh, and then I've just got some Pilia peperomioides cuttings. These are both ones that I knocked off my main plants, which actually I have now completely chopped up. So again, we will get to that. Um, but I just knocked them off my main plant when I was moving and popped them in some water. They didn't actually have section of stem on them, which with leaf cuttings, usually they should if you'd like them to root. But they have actually, well, I mean, one of them at least has rooted. So I'm really hoping the other one does the same. And yeah, that would be pretty cool because they're very easy to propagate and I do love the Pelia. Uh, and then this is my Monstera Thai constellation and I wanted a Thai constellation. I know that, I mean, I know they're not kind of the, the rare plant anymore. I know they were kind of the plant that everyone was pining after for a while. And I never got one during that period, not necessarily because I wasn't willing to invest the money. I just... I wanted to make sure that, I think because they are so expensive, I wanted to make sure that I truly wanted it and it wasn't just a craze. Um, but the hype 
I think it's kind of died down a little bit now. You see them popping up everywhere. And I think sometimes, and I guess this is just the whole like social media thing, isn't it? But sometimes when a plant stops being so trendy and it is more available, a lot of people just kind of go off it a bit. And I think that's such a shame. But that is actually when I got mine. Um, I've only had mine for six, eight months. And pretty much all of what you see here is new growth in the time that I've had it. It did come with a couple of very little leaves and I did lose them sadly, but that does often happen. And now its most recent leaf has started to fenestrate, which I'm very happy about. So yeah, it's still quite small at the moment and it is a very slow grower, a very, very slow grower. When you compare this to the Albo, it is like crazy slow, but I'm excited to see with time what it does for me. And yeah, I do hope at some point it will get lovely and big and mature. I'm saying that with a lot of my plants and I think I'll have to move when that time comes because I won't be able to part with them and I won't have any space left. Um, but this one is, so this one and that one there, oh sorry, I forgot to move the camera. This one and that one I get confused about. This is either a begonia snowcap or a begonia ice queen. And I think this is the begonia snowcap and that is the begonia ice queen, but I'm not entirely sure. So it's one of the two. Uh, I'm not a massive begonia person, if I'm being honest. I I think I think they're very nice, but I've never really been drawn to them in the same way that other people are. I know some people absolutely obsess over begonias, and that's never been me. But I do really like these two. Also, I've just realised this is ooh nice. This is very dirty in here. I should have had a clean up, but hey ho. Um, but yeah, that one's just propagating in moss at the moment, and yeah, I mean begonias have got quite spindly roots, but I'm pretty sure it is rooted. Uh, I'm just going to leave it, leave it in moss for a little bit longer anyway. Um, and then I've got a Hoya polyneura here, which is also known as the fishtail Hoya. And again, these were just some cuttings that I got from Etsy. This is a very, very common, easy to get hold of Hoya. And I just had, I'd never had it. And I was like, oh, you know what? I fancy, I fancy a new Hoya. And I picked these cuttings up for, I think, under a pound. They were very cheap, but... I think it's just really gorgeous. I love the veination again. I think it's really delicate and really pretty. And I just love the shape of the leaves. I mean, I said it, fishtail. They just look so delicate and pointy. And yeah, I'm excited about that. I should probably get some more to pack it out a bit if I want to get a full plant going. Or I just wait. I'd have to wait quite a while for it to then produce even more growth for me to be able to propagate. But... I'll figure that out when the time comes. Um, and then the Monstera Esqueleto. So, so I really love this plant. This is a plant that I wanted for a long time and I never bought for myself, but again, one of my friends was getting rid of and I was like, of course I will buy this off you because it's magnificent. It had been chopped. She chopped it to propagate it and I think gave a cutting to somebody else. And it started giving me, so this growth point and that growth point, I mean, not that much after I got it from her, I think within a couple of a couple of weeks, maybe a month. But, and I mean, maybe it's my own fault for not getting it on a moss pole sooner, but there's no foliage. It's just this ridiculously long runner. And every time it gets to the top, I think, oh, well, that next bit's going to be a leaf. And it's just not. And I know that I absolutely could take some wet stick cuttings and I could propagate them and probably get some foliage going, but I'm just kind of intrigued to see what it's going to do. I mean, it's, oh my God, it's actually going to hit the top shelf soon. So I will have to figure that out. Aha. Uh -huh. I've just noticed something that I haven't noticed before. Oh my God, is that a real live leaf? Yay. Okay. So this bottom section, I think, is about to give me a leaf. Okay, that's good to know, because I was thinking when I saw that started coming up, oh my God, I'm going to have, whoa, I'm going to have two of these big long things. But that's exciting. Okay, maybe I'll let it continue to grow from that point, and maybe I'll take some wet stick cuttings from this bit, chop them up, and then we could plant them all together. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Feel free to answer that question for me, because I'm very indecisive, and we'll probably just let it grow until it is the size of the cabinet otherwise. Uh, but then I've got a philodendron lupinum, and again, I spoke about this one very recently. It looks very similar to my micans at the moment. It is obviously not mature. They look amazing when they're mature, but they are the slowest growers in the entire world. And it's just one that I'm not 
loving if I'm being honest I'm not really finding its growth very rewarding and it's I don't know it's just kind of there and I'm I'm watering it I'm looking after it I obviously haven't got it on a moss pole I probably should do that yeah I probably should do that but I just haven't done it I'm I'm just not that like blown away bowled over by that plant at the moment so that is that that's what it's looking like uh, and then this one is a Hoya latifolia and oh my goodness the leaves of this plant again like what I said about the Hoya polyneura if you just look at the tips they're like little raindrops I think they are so perfect and I got this as a cutting at the plant swap a few months ago and see I, I've, I've always been intrigued by the Hoya latifolia because I know there's so many different varieties of it and again so many different hybrids I've no idea if this is actually a true latifolia if anybody knows let me know but its leaves are just so beautiful and I've just noticed as well or I mean I noticed it the other day but it's got so much bigger it has just given me a little new leaf which makes me very happy along with a little growth point oh in fact that could be that could even be a little peduncle which is the point this little thing oh let's not knock it off this little thing here uh, which is the point at which hoyas flower from and i wouldn't have thought i mean unless this came off a very mature plant i wouldn't have thought it would be doing that yet but who knows who knows um, but yes, again, propagating in moss. I think it's probably a little bit on the soggy side. I need to drain some of that off. What I usually do with my cups of moss when I need to hydrate them is I'll just fill them with water, leave them for a couple of minutes, and then pour all of the water out so that the moss is left hydrated, but there's not too much around the bottom. Um, and I think I might have just left a little bit too much around the bottom. So I will deal with that after this video. Um, and then up here, this is a philodendron florida beauty cutting and i am so happy to have this my lovely friend lisa sent me this in a mystery plant swap that we did together over on instagram and i'd wanted the florida beauty for ages i'd never got a cutting of it and it's it's doing well it's rooted for me um it's rooted really there we go you can see at the bottom there really nicely no new growth as of yet but i'm going to be very excited when it starts growing because as i say i've wanted this plant for ages ages and ages and ages and that's the great thing about swapping plants like if you if you can find a planty friend or if you don't have a planty friend just going on a facebook group or something like that and seeing if anybody wants to do a plant swap with you it is so much fun so much fun like me and lisa kind of said the rough monetary value that we would put on these plants and we would just do do what we think the other person would like and yeah it was great we both came away with some really lovely things uh, and this is a ficus chevariana, which is also known as the um, moonshine rubber plant. Oh, I might need to lift this one out actually because you're going to whack against my mother grow light otherwise. Um, but this one I wanted for ages and again this one is actually very, I, I mean a much more, I guess accessible is the word, um, much easier to get a hold of for a, for a much lower price now. Um, you see these going for under £10 which is really quite crazy because I remember at the beginning of last year these ones, god people were spending hundreds on these plants. Uh, I picked mine up for um, 39 99 and I got it at, oh, Dean's Garden Centre, which was one of the best garden centres I've ever been to. Um, but I got it from there. And the thing I love about this plant is that none of its leaves, I mean, its newer leaves almost have a pinky tinge to them before they fade to this gorgeous, like, look at the variegation, but this gorgeous kind of yellowy green colour. And it has also got a new little leaf unfurling there, which is always very exciting because it's not the fastest grower in the world. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. I, I do love how it grows. It's so different to any other plant. And also, I do have other rubber plants, but the texture of this one's leaves feels so different. It's 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 kind of less, what am I saying? Less rubbery and more, I guess, more papery. Like, it's got much more of a delicate feel to its leaves. And I quite like that. I quite like that. It is a little bit curly at the bottom here. I need to give it a water because it's a little bit dry. Um, but next we're here. So these are actually, these two are the same, the same type of plant, I think. Yes, they are the same type of plant, but obviously they're in slightly different states. So this is Monstera stanzliana, which is also known as Philodendron cobra. And these ones here I got, I got both of them at the plant swap, but that one was rooted and this one wasn't. 
And I have heard, I've never tried to do it before, but I have heard that these ones are notoriously hard to root and they take absolutely ages. One of these cuttings, this one here, has successfully rooted and it's given me a new leaf and you can see, you can see its roots in there. But all of the other ones kind of look like they're on their way out. And to be fair, they've been looking like that since I got them. So I am just going to leave them in there, give them some time and hope that, <laughs> I don't know, in a few years, maybe they start doing something. But I'm glad that this one's taken. And this one here, how beautiful is that balance of irrigation? Isn't that stunning? And it has given me, uh, I think, three. I'm just going to count. So one, two... Oh, it's got a fourth one on the way. Since it's been in this cabinet, and that is in less than two months, which I think is amazing because it is a very slow growing plant. And it is one that I think if I was to, unless I was to get loads more rooted cuttings, I would probably buy this plant as a full one instead of propagating just because, I mean, I don't know if that's totally fair to say, but it is just so slow that unless you're willing to wait a very long time, I mean, you'll, you'll be waiting a very long time. Uh, so yes. Uh, and then as I, whoa, oops. <laughs> right. Well, that probably didn't do good things for the ones that are desperately trying to root and not having much hope. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the one that I said, I think is probably a begonia snowcap. It's got beautiful, beautiful kind of pinky undersides of its leaves and its spots are just so pronounced. Is that the right, right way of saying it? So the one that I think is the, no, actually I said that that was the snow cap and that was the white ice, didn't I? Okay, I'm very confused about those two begonias. One, one is the other and the other is the other. So if that is not a snow cap, it is an ice queen. White ice, that's the one. Um, but yeah, it's got very pronounced spots. And when you look at it next to that one, although that has got lovely polka dotty leaves, they're just a little bit more, they're almost like paint splashes. Whereas this one, it looks like their markings are very deliberate, like somebody's kind of gone in there with like a big thick silver pen or something and just drawn the spots on, but I think it's lovely. And then I've got just a standard Skindapsis Treby. And again, this is another one that hasn't rooted. As you can see, it's looking really curly. And I got this one again at the plant swap and I fell in love with it just because of the size of that leaf. Like it's absolutely ginormous. I feel like you can't properly appreciate it because it is so curly. And I'm hoping it roots. I know they can sometimes be a little bit temperamental, but I felt like moss and cabinet life was probably gonna give it the best fighting chance. So yeah, I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that one, but, but I'm not quite sure. It has been looking like that for quite a long time now. But moving up to the top section of the cabinet, I, where shall I start? I will start here. Um, so this is, again, it's not doing amazingly, but this is a little philodendron scormiferum. And this is a plant that I really, I fell out of love with quite a while ago. And the one that I had, again, I ended up chopping up and sending out cuttings of. And as soon as I sent out the cuttings, I suddenly felt quite sad. And I was like, no, this is actually a plant that I was just getting to love. Why did I give up on it? And so I got myself a new one. I got myself a little baby. And I think I, I actually repotted it the other day, but the soil it was in that it came in was just really kind of dense, compact. It was pulling away from the edges of the pot. It didn't look good quality at all. So I repotted it, but I think just because of that, it's, it's new growth is just a little bit frazzled at the moment. Um, but the thing I love about this plant is it's fuzzy petioles. I think they're just so adorable. And also the mature leaves just have such an unusual kind of wavy, almost like hammerhead shark look to them. And I think that's really beautiful. These leaves aren't the best example to show you of that um, because it's still very juvenile. But yeah, it's a plant that I'm excited about. I'm hoping now that it's had a soil upgrade, it should do a little bit better for me. But yeah, that's, that's what that one is currently looking like. Uh, and then I've got my Alocasia Capria Red Secret and I've actually just noticed I've definitely overwatered this one I've got. Is that mould? Yeah, I think there's some mould growing on top of the moss here. And that is also why it's really important to have fans in your cabinets. I have turned mine off just to film this because otherwise you get a horrible, a really annoying whirring sound. Um, but if you don't have a lot of airflow in a contained space, then obviously it does lead to mould quite a lot. So, so yeah, but, um, but yeah, I think on the whole she's doing well. She hasn't been the fastest grower and this is actually my second Capria Red Secrets. The other one that I had didn't make it, it did rot. 
So if anything, I should probably be teetering on slightly less water, on slightly the underwatering side with this plant if I don't want to relive my past experience. But no, it's beautiful. I love, again, it's very alien-y. Its leaves are almost just like a, I don't know, like a, like a bronze shield. I don't know, that's a weird comparison to make, but you know when you look at old medieval battle pictures, you kind of, you, you could kind of imagine them carrying one of those into battle, couldn't you? It's just, it's a very beautiful plant and I'm excited for it to do good things for me. It has sized up considerably in its growth so far, so hopefully it continues to do that. And here I've got a Discoria Discolor, and this is one that was very kindly given to me when I was at the plant swap, and it has finally started doing something for me. It was just that leaf for absolutely ages, and it's given me these two new beautiful, beautiful leaves. Look at those. Aren't they crazy? And like the little variegated patches as well. It's like they're like dinosaur leaves, they're so cool. Um, and it's also started to climb its way up at the back of my cabinet. And I don't know whether or not to trellis or to pole this plant. It doesn't seem to have very obvious aerial roots or anything like that. So I'm kind of thinking it might benefit from a trellis in the same way that a Hoya would. Um, I need to do a little bit of research with this one actually because it's not a plant I'm that familiar with. I've never had one before. But yeah, like, look at the like iridescence on those leaves. Isn't that incredible? But yeah, and then I've got another Epipremnum skeleton key cutting here. And I took this one to propagate in the hope that I might be able to get more of the skeleton key shape from it. And it did actually start to kind of do that. Like you can see there, the shape of the leaf really starts to change. And that is the point where I should have potted it up and got it on a moss pole, but I didn't because I'm lazy and I forgot. It's very, 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 very well rooted as you can see, but it, its growth now is just kind of going back to how it was before. It's, oh, what's going on there? Oh, in fact, that's a proper little skeleton key leaf, isn't it? It's just tiny. Yeah, so that's kind of what the mature ones look like. They look like that shape, but how strange. Um, but this one here, is just very standard, very normal. And I think I really do need to just get it on a pole because again, that just helps to encourage that lovely, the lovely shape. So I will need to do that. And this is the Skindapsis Silver Hero. I've got a couple of these. I've got one there and I've got this one here that again is just going slightly crazy and climbing the back walls. And this one came from Propagations and it was a difficult one to, uh, firstly, I found it quite difficult to propagate. Like I tried it in a few different mediums until I actually finally had success in moss. And also it's just been fairly slow growing and until I put it in the cabinet and just pretty much left it alone, it really wasn't doing much for me. And yeah, now it's, now it's growing like crazy. And I could, if I take it out and show you, I could, woo, I could technically have it as a trailing plant but I'm quite enjoying just watching it climb the back of the cabinet, to be honest. So I think I'm just going to let it do its thing for now and then and then maybe do that. I mean, obviously, the other option is to get it on a pole. And you don't see skindapsis on poles that often. I don't think I've... I might be wrong in this, but I don't think I've ever seen a silver hero on a pole. So <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, but I'm definitely going to pot this section with it as well. So that, again, it's just a little bit fuller and doesn't make the plant look quite so sparse. So that is the grand plan. That one is also also rooted. So that is the plan with those ones. Um, and then this is a little bit of a sad one. This is my Alocasia Jacqueline. And although, although she's doing okay... <laughs> Um, I've just had a little bit of drama, so let's let's start with these marks here. So my old cabinet that she was in, one of the grow lights wouldn't sit flush on top, not these grow lights, these were just Amazon cheapy grow lights that I was using at the time, and they ended up pushing down on her foliage and she burnt. She burnt in two places, which really is a shame because she's a beautiful plant and she's got lovely leaves and lovely different tones of green. But also I repotted, this is another one I repotted the other day because she'd just really outgrown the pot that she was in before. And for that reason, every time I watered her, she would dry out so quickly again. And I left it a little bit longer than I might usually with Alocasia and it just she just couldn't hack it. And so therefore I've got some yellowing leaves and I know I need to chop these ones off they're not doing her any favours, they're not going to bounce back, but I don't know, it just makes me sad because she was so full at one point and now she's just looking a little bit sorry for herself. 
But yeah, she's still gorgeous. I still love her. And I know that alocasia is fairly quick to grow. And seeing she's in the cabinet, again, high humidity, good light. Now in a good soil mix as well. I'm hoping that she will start to give me some lovely new growth. But yeah, for now, that is that is her. And I was going to say all oh, her glory. Mm, not really, is it? No, not really. Uh, but then on the top shelf up here, I've got a little Hoya sigillatus, which is actually finally starting to give me some new growth. This one's been quite slow. I mean, I haven't had it for, I haven't had it for ages. I think probably about f five months, maybe. I found it really cheaply as a cutting on eBay and it was rooted as well, which always, always helps if you're trying to achieve new growth because obviously otherwise the plant's just focused on building a root system. But yeah, I'm really happy it started to give me some new growth. And I love that it's new growth is coming in so kind of purpley. I'll dig it out and show you. Do you see what I mean? It's just got such gorgeous splashy leaves and they're so long as well. That's what I love about the Sigillatus. It's just, it almost doesn't look like a Hoya. I mean, I know Hoyas are very diverse plants and there's lots of different types, but yeah, I've, if I just saw that, I wouldn't necessarily think Hoya from the off. Uh, but then just next to it, I've got this again as um, one that I got from Grow Tropicals recently. This is a Philodendron Burl Marxist Fantasy and this is one, oh, I'm gonna very carefully, this shelf, is a little bit risky. This one here is a basket and everything's contained. I might actually just take these ones off to show you because otherwise I'm gonna have an accident. I've had many doing this before. Um, but yes, the Philodendron Bellmark's Fantasy. I think again, the bluey silveriness of its leaves is just stunning. And I saw this plant when I went to their warehouse before, their warehouse greenhouse, I don't know what you call it. Uh, but it was climbing another plant. It was just kind of climbing up the trunk of another plant. And I thought it looked beautiful. And ever since then, I've just really wanted one. And it is just potted in moss at the moment. I think I'm probably going to leave it like that for the time being. It was in a little plastic cup and uh, a plastic cup, plastic pot. And I've put it inside a plastic cup. And I've just put a little bit of water at the bottom, which isn't actually touching the moss. But I find that sometimes just to help keep the moss hydrated, that just as it evaporates, just just helps to do that without equaling root rot or anything like that. So, so yeah, I'm really excited for this one. And I think this is definitely one that's going to do well in the cabinets. I know it does like very high light, very high humidity, and it will also need a moss pole. It's got some really gorgeous aerial roots. So I will be getting that on a moss pole quite soon. And then this other one that I just brought down is the Philodendron Yopii. And this one, again, I got very small and it's still fairly small, although it is sizing up really nicely. And every single leaf is getting bigger and bigger. And again, I know I shouldn't peek, but I just like having a little peek if I'm very careful. But I shouldn't do that with one hand. That's not a good idea. But no, I think it definitely needs a repot. I think it's got to the stage now where I think its root system would be fairly well established. And I just can't wait for it to start giving me some of those gorgeous, like, they, I don't know if you've seen Yopi leaves. If you have, you'll know what I mean. They're not dissimilar to the code 69686, but this section here is so much, like, it's so thin and the lobes aren't quite as big. It looks absolutely amazing and I'm really excited for it to give me some bigger, more mature growth. So happy with how it's doing, but yes, not aside from that, a huge amount to say about it at the moment. Um, and then this one is a Hoya globulosa Welsh mountain zoo. This is another plant swap one and it's recently just given me this new leaf and I'm so happy because it's just the most beautiful Hoya. I Like the camera, I highly doubt we'll be able to actually pick it up, but it has got the softest leaves in the world. They're literally... They're like bunnies ears. And the thing about it as well that makes it very different to other Hoya is that although it's tendrilling at the moment, and you can kind of see that, even its tendril is really fuzzy and soft. It's just such a beautiful Hoya and it's one that I've never had before and I'm, yeah, really grateful to own. And oh, in fact, that new leaf looks very, very waxy. Yeah, I'm guessing, I'm guessing its little hairs must come as the as the leaf kind of hardens off, but yeah. And then up here, this is a variegated Hoya Bella. And I always ask people to tell me how you pronounce it because it's it's also known as the, I'm, I'm just gonna say it how I usually say it. I'm gonna say Louis Boys. I think it's actually like Laus Baus or something. 
Um, I don't know why I can never, ever, ever remember that, but I think it's beautiful. And actually, the Hoya Bella isn't slow, but uh, just the normal, regular Hoya Bella, which I have also got, and I'll show you in a minute. But that one is not the fastest growing Hoya, and this one, especially seeing as it's variegated, you kind of would have expected to be even slower, because obviously it doesn't contain as much chlorophyll, but it has been so speedy. And in the time that I've had it, I think it was only just kind of one strand when I first got it. And obviously now it's it's becoming really gorgeous and full and I could almost pot that up as its own, like in its own pot and have it as its own little plant. I mean, I could obviously still do that anyway, but do you know what I mean? It wouldn't look like a very little immature plant. Um, and then here, tucked away, I've got a little Makoda's Patola jewel orchid and I've always had the worst luck. Also, <clears throat> my voice suddenly feels like it's going, so I suddenly sound a little bit croaky. I'm sorry. Um, but this Makoda's Patola has I, it's given me, not this specific one, but this type of plant has given me not a lot of grief, that's not fair to say. It just has brought me bad luck, let's say. I have dropped three of these now, and every single time I've dropped them, they've broken, and I haven't had much luck propagating them. So this one is currently in moss, and it has been since the plant swap. Again, this is one that I got at the plant swap, and it does seem happy. But I'm reluctant to say much more because I feel like I'll jinx it, and then I'll probably be like, whoa. Uh, I'm actually not even gonna joke about that. I'm gonna put it straight back where it belongs. But yes, touch wood. At the moment, it is doing okay. And then finally in my cabinet, this one, oh, this is a special plant. This is my variegated Alocasia fry deck and its front leaf has just decided to go whoop and droop down. So maybe I should film this looking up at it. But how beautiful is that leaf? Again, just all of the different kind of, like the shapes that the variegation makes, all the different colors, like it's got some gorgeous minty green in there. It's obviously got the kind of creamy white and I love the regular, the regular fry deck anyway. The variegated one was just, oh my God, it was an absolute dream and I feel so lucky to own it. And it is, as you can see as well, currently giving me another new leaf. The one thing that I like, I know Alocasia do often cycle with their leaves, like when one starts pushing out a new leaf, then another one will often die off. But this one does it on a very dramatic scale. Like, I think I've probably lost about six, is that an exaggeration? Maybe six, yeah, five or six leaves from it in the time that I've had it. And it's not that it doesn't seem healthy, and it's not that the growth that it's giving me isn't gorgeous. But I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if once that leaf had formed and hardened off, this one would then die off. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure why it's doing that, but I'm gonna say it's just kind of normal for the plant and the plant seems fairly happy, the roots seem healthy and happy and I'm not gonna worry about it too much for the time being. But right, I'm just gonna get everything back into my cabinet and then I will take you around and I will show you the rest of this room. I was just putting all the plants back in my cabinet and I realised that there's one that I forgot to show you in there. This one is my Hoya Tangamoos and I spoke earlier about weird, like really weird plants and this one definitely is, like it is so incredibly beefy and it's just got really cool venation, especially when you hold it up to the light, it just looks amazing. And I got this one at the Rare Plant Festival and it hasn't, to be honest, so far done a lot for me. Like that is the leaf it came with, it is rooted. It seems fairly happy, but no new growth as of yet. So yeah, I can't really imagine how this one will grow. Like it's just such a, such a ginormous chunky leaf. I really can't picture how that Hoya would look if it was a full plant. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about that one, but it's just not doing not doing much for me yet. Uh, and then moving over to the unit here, which again, I mean, some people might say it's crowded. I think I could fit more plants on there personally. <laughs> but starting at the side here, this is a Peperomia obtusifolia, and I repotted this one fairly recently. It was in terracotta before, and. The, I didn't move it up a pot size. The only reason I chose to repot it is just because it hasn't really been growing for me. And obviously it is a very succulent peperomia and I don't know, it, I think it is just quite a slow grower naturally, but I think the variegation is so pretty. It's just, I don't know, it almost looks like a fake plant. Do you know what I mean? Like if you saw that in 
I don't know. And an interior design magazine or something like that, you'd probably think it was just a fake little plastic plant. I think that's just because it's so, it's so perfect. It's never given me any grief. Again, ridiculously low maintenance. I don't water it very often. I have changed its light up many times and it still continued to look, to look decent. Uh, but yeah, I really love that one and I do hope that it does give me some nice new growth now that I've got it in a decent soil mix and out of terracotta. But behind it, this is a Sansevieria Laurentii that I'm just propagating in water. I've propagated this one. This one has been going for, you can see it's got some insane roots. This one's been propagating for a very long time and it's definitely ready to be potted back up with my big one. And this is the one, if you watched my houseplant bedroom tour, which, how long ago was that? I can't remember, between about eight months and a year ago, that one was the one that was the screaming cutting. It was making such a weird noise. And at the time I was just so confused and I was like, why is my propagation making a noise? But I think it is just because it had quite a lot of algae in the water and as that kind of rose to the surface, someone explained this really well and I can't remember exactly how they put it, but it's basically a chemical reaction that as gas is released, it creates a sound. And I think that's what it was, but... But yeah, it hasn't done it since. So it's also given me, as you can see, some really gorgeous new growth here as well. So it's definitely ready to be potted. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, but then I've got some, again, this is a mix. I've got some normal Hoya croniana cuttings in water with some super silver cuttings, Hoya croniana super silver, and some Hoya curtisii as well, just because I accidentally snapped that bit off and I thought I'll pop them all together. I also just really like using these amber bottles. They're just old kombucha bottles that I keep. And besides the fact that they look really nice, it's actually much better for the roots to be in something dark because obviously roots don't particularly like the light. But just looking at it, you can see they've rooted really nicely already. And to be honest, I think they're probably just about ready to be potted. I might leave them for a little bit longer just to be on the safe side, but I do think, God, this leaf's getting in the way. I do think they would be okay if I potted them up now. And then this is just a little Pilia peperomioides. Again, you'll see quite a few of these as we go around. My mother plant is constantly pushing out little babies. And so I've got lots of them. I have given lots of them away and they make really nice presents because they're just such a cheeky little, I don't know, they're just such a cool plant. And I really like it. This one's doing well and it's actually not looking that much like a baby anymore. So, so yeah, just have a little yellow leaf there. Or is that a new leaf? Oh, no, that's very much very much a yellow leaf, so that one can go in the bin. But then next to it, my Alocasia fry deck. Oh my goodness, it's actually, oh, it's not actually a fry deck, it's a mitz, uh, I'll put the name on the screen, but it's commonly known as the Alocasia fry deck, and I just adore this plant. Oh my goodness, I think it's definitely my favorite, oh, apart from the variegated version of this plant that you just saw in the cabinet, it's definitely my favorite Alocasia, I would say, and it's just kind of constantly one of my favorite plants. I just love the way it grows. I love how dramatic its veination is. Like, I remember when I first saw this plant in someone else's collection, I was like, that can't be a real plant. And when I did an alocasia care video ages ago, I had my big fry deck in the corner and lots of people were like, that plant doesn't look real. And I was like, I know, it, it really doesn't look real. Um, and this leaf has got some damage on it. I did find some thrips a couple of months ago and I have treated it and I haven't seen any since, but as you can tell, there is still quite a lot of damage there. I did isolate this plant and I'm now using lots of predatory mites. So that seems to be keeping things at bay, but, but yeah, I'm loving how it's growing. And then here I've got a Monstera adansonii and this one's doing okay. Again, I know I need to put this one on a moss pole. And to be completely honest, the only reason I put this one here for the time being, lighting wise, it's okay for this plant, but I just put it there to cover up my TV wires because I haven't, oh new leaf. Haven't had a chance to get any trunking or anything like that yet, but it's growing well. It looks fairly healthy, but it is a plant that would definitely appreciate something to climb. So that's on my, my never ending list of planty things to do. And next to it is another variegated Monstera. And this little one didn't do anything for me for months and months and months and months and months. I had just those two leaves that were rooted and they looked fine. They weren't browning. Nothing kind of obvious was happening. It just wasn't giving me any growth. And I popped it over here when I first moved in and this isn't, I mean, I would say this plant could do with a little bit more light, but I just kind of thought to myself, I'll switch it out. I'll, I'll play about with it and I'll see where it's going to be happiest. And since I've put it there, 
it's given me a new leaf, so I'm kind of thinking maybe this spot isn't too bad for this plant. I don't know, as I say, I'm still figuring lots of things out, but I really love it. I think it's just very cute, it's very diddy. I think that little splotch of variegation there, that white, is so striking. It almost just looks like it's been painted. But yeah, I'm keeping it there for the time being, and hopefully it will continue to do, to do good things. And then under here, you can barely even see this one, but this is just a little ZZ plant. This one is the best at surviving in low light conditions, hence why it's just tucked in the corner there. It is ridiculously easy to care from. Again, this one came from my big mother plant that I'll show you in a minute, but this one only gets watered maybe once a month. You can put it in virtually no light and it will survive. It's just, it is just the easiest plant in the world. And I think the reason why some people go wrong with these plants is because they kind of, they over love them and they give them too much water, essentially kind of fuss over them when they don't need to be fussed over because they just kind of take care of themselves. So it's one that I definitely never worry about and it seems happy, seems happy wherever. Uh, and then I've got a very little string of pearls here that is propagations from my big plant. And I just potted these ones straight up in soil as cuttings. And before then I was propagating string of pearls in water. And whilst you can kind of see the roots developing a little bit better like that, I think soil propagation is almost easier in a way because firstly, it looks like a full plant from the second you pot it up. And also if you do propagate in water and then you move your cuttings to soil, sometimes because their root system does tend to be so spindly and fragile, it can send them into shock and it can cause issues. So I think doing it straight into soil, in my opinion, is probably the best way to do it. And again, it probably should be getting a little bit more light, but it hasn't complained. I do sometimes switch it out and put it by the window, but for the time being, it seems happy there. And I just like having a little, a little trailing thing coming off all of the kind of very upright plants on here. Uh, and then I've just got another, another propagation. These are just some more Hoya Croniana Super Silver cuttings. Again, rooting really nicely in there. Uh, and behind it, oh my goodness, my Calathea Orbifolia. I really do, I really do love this plant. I've banged on about this one so much before. I'm just coming back so you can get a proper look at her. I think she's just stunning. She's just a magnificent beauty. And I know that these ones do have a reputation of being incredibly dramatic and oversensitive. And I've got to say, and it's funny, isn't it? Because I know some people will find plants really easy and other people will find those same plants really difficult and vice versa. For me, the Orbifolia has been very straightforward to look after. <laughs> I really haven't had any issues with her and some of my other plants that I know you guys have said you found really easy, I have struggled with. But this one, I think she just likes the environment she's in. She really doesn't complain. I just water her when I feel the soil's slightly dry. I haven't even got a humidifier over in this section. I have got one over by my radiator and I also run one through in my bedroom, but she just seems to cope pretty well in anything. And again, she was down in my bedroom before, in my basement bedroom, which really didn't get much natural light. She's not in the highest light spot here, but but yeah, she's just, she's doing good things. There have been times where she has given me drama. She's had some edges that have kind of browned, uh, well, that's damaged there, but yeah, like you can see here, this was all browning and I just chopped it back just here so that she appears to be a little bit healthier. And to be honest, she could probably, she will never complain if she has a bit of extra humidity, but so long as it's kind of 60, 70% plus, I, she's never given me grief, never given me grief. So yeah, beautiful plant. I love the stripiness to her leaves. And also the thing that I love, and I don't know, I don't think I've actually got an example of this at the moment. No, I don't. But when her leaves unfurl, they just look like beautiful little trumpets. Like they come up all <laughs> loopy, loopy, is that the right word? They come up all trumpety and then they unfurl and they just, they, they look beautiful. And I love as well with the different shades of green, like these are relatively new leaves, the lighter ones and it just contrasts so well. This is what I mean about different shades of green as opposed to lots of color in houseplants. This again is just my personal preference, but that for me, I could get, I could get totally lost in that plant. But then coming down here, so this one's not doing very well. Again, I was gonna say this is also a mother grow light. I've just got this one on a floor mount and you can mount them like that in the same way that I've done on my cabinets, but I just think it looks nice and slick and minimal here and I've already banged on about it with the cabinet grow lights. The light it produces is just so good for your plants. But, so my Epipremnum skeleton key, this one is just not looking very happy. It was doing really, really well and it grew off the moss pole. And as you've seen in the video so far, I have propagated a lot of sections of it that are doing well. 
Yeah. But the mother plant is just not that happy at the moment. And I almost think that maybe I might have put her a bit too close to the grow light and it might just be a little bit too bright for her. Epipremnum do do quite well in, I say slightly lower light. The reason I put her in such bright light is because I wanted her to start forming the skeleton key shape. But I think I might have overdone it a bit. But as I say, I have got some other cuttings that are doing really well. I think, I'm thinking I probably will chop this plant up at some point soon and propagate it just to get it back to a more healthy state. But I still love it. I still, oh, my voice just cracked. I still love it. I still, I still really enjoy this plant, but looking at it at the moment does make me a little bit sad. Like, yeah, that doesn't look particularly healthy. Um, but here I've got a red coral cactus and I've actually, I've got two of these and you'll see the other one again when we get to the hanging plants, but I accidentally ordered myself two and it actually was a genuine accident. I don't know how it happened, um, but I really love this one. I love the structure of its growth and I really love the way that it trails, but what's interesting is the other one doesn't have such bright light and the one here, and this is why it's called the red coral cactus, as you can see, as it gets sun stressed, it starts to go really kind of pinky red and I think that's so beautiful. So yeah, I just quite enjoy it there on the floor, just kind of filling in the gaps and making it feel a little bit more jungly. It's It's been really easy to look after. I've only watered it, I think I probably water it roughly once every two, three weeks or something like that and it doesn't complain. It's also a cactus because it's a jungle cactus that does really well with higher humidity levels. So that is always good because obviously I do have to keep the humidity fairly high in here for the rest of my plants. Uh, and this one is my Philodendron brantianum and she's doing okay at the moment. I have chopped her back a lot recently because I just wanted to encourage some kind of bushier, fuller growth towards the bottom of the plant. And she's stunning. I mean, I love, I love the silvery color of her leaves. And this is currently what my philodendron sodoroy that you saw in my cabinet, this is the one I was comparing it to. That's what it currently looks like. But it's a very, very low maintenance, very easy to care for plants. Really don't do a lot to it. Uh, it's got a big section of growth up here that's looking a little bit leggy and damaged. So again, I think I'm going to do some more chopping and propping and probably take a look at its roots at some point soon and see if it needs a repot because I have a feeling it might do. But yeah, it's very, very lovely. And then down here, I've got another one of my Anthurium clarinerviums just kind of tucked at the back here. And I, as I've already said, love the clarinervium, but this is one that I've actually pollinated. And as you can see, it has got some lovely berries forming, but oh my goodness, this Anthurium is so slow to pollinate. I can't actually remember exactly when I initially pollinated this one, but it feels like it was about a year ago. It was probably only about eight months ago, but I have heard that they can take up to two years to produce berries, which is crazy. So again, light from the grow light. I'm just hoping that they should be ready for harvest by the end of this year. <laughs> oh, I really want them to be ready. I'm so impatient. But yeah, you can tell they are really, they're forming really, really nicely. So yeah, and then... Down here in a little cloche, I've got my Hoya Wilbur Graves and I'm not gonna take it out of the cloche just because you can see I've stuffed loads of moss in there to just kind of contain the humidity. And there we go, if I hold it in the light, you can see it a bit better. But I wanted this Hoya for such a long time and I won it in a bid on eBay. And <laughs> I mean, fun story, I would have actually paid 12 pounds for this, but I logged on from my mum's account to see when I was bidding to see where it was at. And I completely lost my mind and ended up bidding from my mum's account and ended up outbidding myself and then ended up paying, I think I paid £19 for it in the end, which I don't think is bad. It's a relatively unusual Hoya and I've seen them go for a lot more. And also I've just noticed, oh, where can you see at the back there? If you look in, it has got some new growth starting to form which is very exciting because this cutting I've had it maybe four months now four or five months and it just hasn't really done a lot it's been rooting and it looks healthy but no new growth as of yet so that little bit at the back makes me very excited uh, and then here I've got a very leaning ficus tinnicky and I love the variegated rubber plant I think it's really stunning I think it's variegation is very pretty but I just haven't really again I think I've slightly neglected this plant and if I sit back here and show you there you can see it's literally going whoop so I think 
I, I should have just been rotating it, but I just have got very complacent with that. I think what I probably need to do is give it a repot, upgrade its soil because I haven't done that in a while, and then stake it more upright because it's just very, very, very leany at the moment and it's gonna end up toppling over. But I just really love with this one how its new growth comes in kind of pinky and then and then fades to the gorgeous white variegation. And again, all the different colours within the variegation on it. They're almost like they're almost like army prints, like camouflage. They're just so, so beautiful. So Yes, and then at the back here, I have got my white princess, which is desperate for a water. I checked her just before this video and I was like, oh God, she's very floppy. But she is, she is one of my favorite plants. I think she will always be one of my favorite plants. I, she's just magnificent. And I grew her from a one leaf cutting and she's just done amazingly. And I am actually gonna, she's currently flowering and I am gonna chop her flowers. I'll explain why in a minute. But I decided to leave them on for this video just so that you could see what they looked like because it is quite unusual for them to flower unless they are very mature. And mine has just sized up so quickly. Obviously she's not perfect. I mean, as I've already said, no plant is perfect, but she has got areas of browning, this area of variegation here, which was a beautiful half moon leaf, very sadly started to brown when I moved house just as the plant was acclimating to my new home but on the whole I think she's looking pretty good but yeah the reason for me chopping her flowers and I've actually done the same with my pink princess recently is just because I don't as much as I would love to I don't plan to pollinate this plant at the moment and pushing out these flowers takes so much energy from the plant and what I've noticed in the time that she has been flowering her growth has got so much smaller like if you look at that leaf and then you look at the size of that leaf, you can see the difference. And I know that obviously it does alter with the time of year, but at the same time, if I think there's anything I can do to encourage more beautiful foliage, I'm gonna do it. So yeah, those flowers, those flowers will be going soon. And then coming over here, so that is the spot where my Monstera dubia, the one I showed you over there, that's where that one usually sits, just facing out of the window. I have got my, oh, turn around so you can see, my variegated Monstera adansonii, and this is one that I got sent by, I think, Aroid Market as just a little cutting, and it's just doing brilliantly. As you can see, she's actually growing off the moss pole now, and I will need to obviously either extend the moss pole or chop her, and the thought of chopping this plant makes me very sad, so I so no, I'm quite ready to do that. But the structure of her leaves, especially compared to the standard Monstera adansonii, is almost more similar to the Escaletto that I showed you over in my cabinets. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's ridiculously fenestrated and they're just sizing up so quickly. But if you look at the leaf here that she's just given me, how weird is that? I kind of love that she's so weird and so unpredictable, but yeah, I adore this plant and it's one that I've wanted for ages and I was over the moon when I was finally able to get a cutting. This is another plant where the prices have come right down. Like, oh my goodness, this time last year, people were paying thousands for a cutting of this plant and now you can get a full plant for a couple of hundred quid, which just blows my mind. But also you'll see that I've got quite a lot of cups on top of moss poles and I have spoken about this before, but what I do is I just make a tiny little like pinprick holes at the bottom and every single day I'll just fill them up a little bit with water and that just helps to keep the moss poles really hydrated so that the aerial roots can grip on, as you can see there, and kind of go into the pole, form their own little root system and help to keep the plant happy and healthy. But also it means that if I come to chop this plant to propagate it, I probably won't have to actually wait for it to root. I'll be able to just chop it and plant it straight back up. So yeah, she seems, oh, what's going on here? I thought that was broken. That leaf's just started growing in a very strange direction. But no, she seems very happy. She seems happy here. So I just turn her to face the window. And again, when people come over, I do tend to turn her around and face her into the room so that they can appreciate her, even if they're not planty people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this spot definitely helps to keep her happy. And next to her, again, I'll have to turn this one around so that you can see it a little bit better. But this is my philodendron splendid and I love, I know, I'm, I know I am saying that I love all my plants. It's really hard for me not to say that I love them all because I genuinely, I genuinely do. But look at the size of that leaf. 
isn't that just beautiful? And it's so velvety and shimmery and her venation is almost golden. Like she's such a magical plant. She's got gold running through her veins and she just makes me unbelievably happy. Her growth is kind of going out in slightly different directions at the moment, but I think that is just because of the position she was in before I moved. And obviously now she's just got one light source before it was kind of 360 light. So yeah, she's just slowly turning to face the light. But I also just noticed this morning, look at this. This is very exciting. This is a brand new leaf. And so far, every single leaf has got bigger and bigger and bigger. And considering the fact that this was her last leaf, I'm kind of thinking the next one is going to be even bigger than this one. And again, I'm doing the same cup method with this one, but I'm also on the back of this pole, I just decided to wrap some plastic around it. And one of you made a very good point and said I could have just cling filmed it, but I basically just wanted to contain as much of the moisture as I possibly could because I do plan on chopping and propagating this plant. I love how she is, but her growth down the bottom, it's, I mean, it's okay. It's not awful, but I would just quite like to conserve the beautiful big growth from maybe like this point here and then get her going as a huge plant but as you can see down here if you look just there she is rooting really nicely into the pole so again when I come to chop and prop very similar to what I just said about the Adansonii but when I come to chop and prop this one she will probably be able to be planted straight into soil and I won't have to worry about the propagation failing so yeah and then down here <laughs> these are just some ones that just need the light right now and I'm gonna have to squidge down and try and show you um, these ones are not in an awful state, but they're all very much here for a reason. So I've got my Philodendron Milano Chrysum, which was previously over on the unit over there that I showed you. And she was doing okay, but I just don't think lighting was adequate for her. As you can see, she has started yellowing. I did lose a couple of leaves, but since I've put her here, she has started giving me some new growth and the growth that she has got hasn't got any worse. Like the yellowing hasn't got any worse. So I'm thinking... For now, this is probably going to be the best spot for her. I'm actually tempted to move my sofa more that way and kind of get a lot more, whoops, get a lot more plants along this line because obviously it is the best lit spot ever. Um, but no, I love the Milano Chrysum. I think her leaves are so beautifully delicate and velvety. And again, I know I just said about the gold veination. This, my Philodendron Splendid, this one is a cross between the Milano Chrysum and the Philodendron Vericosum. Oh, which actually reminds me, before we move on here, I will show you what's in the box. This is one of my one of my big propagation boxes, and I haven't actually opened it in probably a couple of months. So let's have a look in there. I'll just get in there and then I'll show you. So, oh, a lot has changed since the last time I looked in here, which is always very exciting. I love creating propagation boxes and then just kind of leaving them alone because when you come back to them, you've no idea what to expect. There's usually really exciting things happening and there is in here. So I've got lots of little, this is Philodendron Vericosum, the other one that the Splendid is crossed with. So this is a little Philodendron Vericosum. I've got quite a lot of Vericosum wet sticks. All of these ones down here as well are also varicosum. I did decide to chop up my plants just because she wasn't looking that healthy. I'd struggled a lot with spider mites with her and I just thought eventually, you know what, let's just bite the bullet and start again. So yeah, I'm very glad to see she's giving me some lovely growth. And this position's perfect because I don't have to worry about grow lights or anything. She does just get the light from the window and also acts as a stand for some of my other plants. Uh, but then this is some Hoya Crimson Queen, which I don't really know why I chopped up, to be honest. I think I think I was going to prop it in water and then I decided not to, so I just stuck it in the box. So yeah, that's also Crimson Queen. And then here I've got a big, big Pallionia pulchra cutting, which has rooted amazingly. And I do need to pot this one up. I'm just kind of like, I don't quite know how to go about potting this one up because my friend Emma that gave me this cutting in the plant swap that we did, she's got hers in just kind of a standard pot, but mine has rooted, if I can show you, like so much into the moss all the way down. I think really I would need to grow this on a moss pole now. So it seems very happy in the box. At the moment, I'm just letting it do its thing, but at some point, I will be I will be coming to do that. Uh, and then I've just got a little Hoya Matilde cutting here, which again is just rooting, not a lot to see, but it's just living its happy little box life. 
And then these two, so these two things here are bulbs. I'm, I am i don't know if they're going to do anything at all, and I can't remember what the name of them is, so I'll have to put the name on the screen. But I'm really intrigued about them. The plant that they produce looks so bizarre, and I've never seen it before. I was just given those at the plant swap, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, I know nothing about them, so I just thought I'd stick them in the box and see if anything happened, and so far nothing has. Uh, and then this one here, I'm pretty sure this is Philodendron Gloriosum, as well as this one here, which is actually starting to give me a beautiful leaf. I, as I said at the beginning of this video, I chopped up my Gloriosum a while ago, and I've propagated quite a few bits from it. So yeah, that seems to be doing well, which is good. And then I've just got some watermelon peperomia cuttings here. And these are from my friend Lottie. I got them from her at the plant swap. And I did also get some from her at the first plant swap. And all of those ones rotted. And I was so sad. And I was like, oh no, I, I don't know how to propagate this plant. I've propagated peperomia before, but this one doesn't seem to be responding well. And luckily this time it has taken. And look at that ditty little leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, that makes me so happy. Um, and then, yeah, I've just got some other Peperomia Silver Queen cuttings in there as well. Is it Silver Queen? Silver Frost? I actually can't remember, but I've got some of them in there just because those were bits that broke off my mother plant when I first got it. They just snapped. So, yeah, I thought I'd whack them in the box and see what they did. But apart from that, I've got some... Uh, this is just a wet stick, in fact. It's not very interesting and it hasn't done anything yet. That is just a Monstera Standaliana wet stick and they do take such a long time to propagate, as I said about the ones in my cabinet. But yeah, that's what it's currently looking like. I think quite a few of them are probably going to be ready to be potted soon and then I can get some, some new things started. But I love that propagation box and I, as I say, I just really enjoy leaving it for a while and then coming back and seeing what's going on in there. It's just, it's like magic happens in there and then you look back and it's, it's like you've won a little prize. <laughs> I find it very exciting. But going back to the plants down here on the floor, so I showed you the Milano Chrysum. And then next to it, I've got a philodendron tortum. I got this one in a rescue box from Grow Tropicals just a few days ago, and it's doing really well. I actually don't know why it was in the rescue box. It definitely doesn't look like a plant that needs rehabbing. I know it probably shouldn't be that close to the rest of my plants. I have given it a very thorough check over, and as I say, I am using lots of predatory mites at the moment. It's just a risk that I've taken because I want to keep it close to the window. Um, but yeah, lovely plant. Enjoy it very much. I'm probably going to pot this one up with my other philodendron tortum that you saw to just kind of get that plant looking a little bit fuller. But for now, it seems to be adjusting well. No issues. Uh, and then I've just got some empty, ooh, and very green propagation things that I will deal with at some point. I was going to get some propagations going in them recently and I don't know why I didn't. Um, but then I've got another, another philodendron silver sword. This is the one that I told you about at the beginning of the video. This belonged to my friend Sophie, who's wholesome houseplants on Instagram. And she was just saying it's not particularly bringing her joy. It was a rescue one. She wasn't getting on that well with it and she was looking to rehome it. And because I love it so much, I said that I would take it. And it's done amazingly well considering the journey it's been on. Like it was bashed about and battered on its journey back. This stem here, this petiole snapped and I actually just used a metal rod and taped it up. But as you can see, it's kind of done the trick. This leaf hasn't died back and the plant is still giving me some beautiful growth and it does seem very happy in this spot as well. So yeah, just look at that new leaf. It's just so gorgeous. So yeah, and then next to that one, I've got another variegated Monstera. And this one I'm actually keeping by for someone on my Patreon who's going to buy it from me. But I just, oh my goodness, it's such a beautiful, beautiful plant. And this is a relatively new leaf as well. I think I saw that it had... Oh no, I think I just must have seen that bit and thought it had another one on the way. But it's growing really well. It's just in moss at the moment. And I think, again, I talk about the balance of irrigation. This one is just so splashy and it's obviously got very good genes. It seems happy here. I'm not doing a huge amount to it at the moment. But as I say, it's got good light. It's giving me new growth. It seems pretty happy. And yeah, that's about it. I won't bang on too much about variegated monsteras because I know you're getting a lot of that in this video. But then this one here, my Syngonium Albo, this is the one that I just said I wasn't 
a huge fan of. I used to love the Syngonium Albo and until relatively recently mine went all the way to the top of the moss pole there and I have chopped it back. It's just one, I mean like if you look at this section of growth here, beautiful, but obviously that leaf, it doesn't contain any chlorophyll. The leaf is essentially doomed. It's not going to last very long and it's very unlikely to produce any more kind of balanced green and white growth. So I keep chopping it back. I appreciate the leaves while they're there, but I've just kind of got a bit bored of continuously chopping this plant back and it's not bringing me joy. I think it would make somebody else a lot happier. So it is one that I am probably going to rehome. But in the meantime, it's looking fairly happy, fairly healthy. And I'm just kind of caring for it out of out of duty, which I, do, I don't like doing with plants. Every time I do anything to my plants, I want to feel like I'm doing it and it's making me happy and I'm getting something in return from them. And sorry to say, I just don't feel that about this plant anymore. But it's nothing to feel bad about. It does just happen sometimes. Sometimes you do fall out of love with plants. Oh, and then the empty... Oh, and in fact, sorry about that as well. The empty pot here... This is a plant that I actually, I mean, I don't really know why I'm showing you it in detail because there's not a lot to see here. Let's have a look and see if anything's happening. Um, but this is a plant that I got fairly recently. It is a Fateris albo lineata, which is a type of fern. And it only lasted about a week, two weeks in my house. And I was absolutely, oh, I see some greenery. <gasps> I was absolutely gutted because it's a type of fern that I've had. I had a bamboo fern, which is very similar before, and it really didn't last very long. And I was like, oh my God, it's a plant that I just, I can't get it. It's not doing anything. And someone or a few of you actually said in the comments, that often happens with certain types of ferns when they come into a new environment and chop it completely back, cover it with cling film, put it somewhere really humid, and it will bounce back. And actually that is a little bit of new growth. Oh. And perhaps that is in there as well. Okay, maybe there is hope for this plant because, oh my goodness, I know you can't see anything at the moment. In fact, I'll put a clip in of what it looks like, but it was so beautiful, so beautiful. So if that can bounce back, I will be incredibly happy. Yay! Oh my goodness, that's making me very excited. Um, But what I was going to say, again... Not a plant, obviously, but another product. So this is another liquid gold leaf product that I absolutely love. And I do give this a lot of credit for the fact that I have moved to a completely different environment and my plants haven't given me too much grief. This is, I think it's a relatively, again, this isn't sponsored. I just love this product. I think it's a relatively new product of theirs and it's basically designed to when you spray it on your plant's leaves, you dilute it, you spray it on your plant's leaves and it helps to naturally encourage photosynthesis in your plants. So basically, if you're maybe not able to give your plants all of the light that they need I mean obviously they should still have good light and it isn't a replacement for light but it basically just means that they're going to be able to get more out of the light that they are receiving so I started using this kind of regularly when I moved my plants from the conservatory to here and yeah it's it's done really good things so again would highly recommend and have got a discount code we'll link it down below but then oh this is an exciting one so my Hoya Sarawak I've shown you this one before and I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm going to work my way up because I've shown you this plant so many times before and it's only ever had three leaves and it's just started doing something really exciting. Oh, look at that. Honestly, I cannot even explain how happy I am that it's finally putting out some new growth. And that leaf, I mean, the other week, it was only about that big. It was so small. In fact, when it first came out, I, I wondered if it was even a leaf because it was so tiny. And I didn't think it would size up as much as it has because it wasn't a top cutting. It was just a mid cutting, as you can see there. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm just like oh my god maybe it's even going to be as big as these beautiful leaves because this plant I mean it is I cannot even explain how like it feels solid it is so sturdy and so thick and it's just the most amazing Hoya I think I've ever seen I'm just totally in love with it and the thing that I love as well is that although it is just this like beautiful almost like limey green color it's just got such subtle little splashes of variegation and the veination as well like it's so raised and distinctive and it's just a very like I mean I think definition of like statement plant like look at that 
Isn't that just amazing? So yeah, I am always loving that plant. I will continue to give you updates on that plant because I'm so intrigued about what it's going to do for me next. I have no idea at all about how it's going to grow, if its leaves are going to change shape, because I've seen that happen with certain types of Hoya like this before. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, just got it facing the window here. It seems very happy. And then also, so again, another non-planty thing, but this plant shelf here, my friend JB, who's also got a YouTube channel, I will link it down below, he made this for me the other day, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. He uses pallet wood and reclaimed materials and stuff like that, and he kind of said to me, would you like something like this? And I was just like, yes, I think that would be amazing. So yeah, it just I'll show you it actually from back here. So yeah, that's that's what it looks like. And it just allows me to put lots of plants on lots of different levels. And I think it's just really wonderful. So thank you, JB. And as I say, I'll link his YouTube channel down below because he has a like step-by-step -step how, to, how to make it if any of you are creative and you fancy doing that. Um, but here at the bottom, I've got a Musa banana, banana plant, a Musa dwarf Cavendish. And I actually picked this one up in Tesco a few weeks ago. I was in there, I picked them both up in Tesco. I went in there and I just got a little bit distracted and I should have been doing food shopping, but instead I was like, I'm just gonna browse the plants and see what they've got. And this one wasn't looking great. It had, I've actually trimmed back some of the edges of its leaves. It was looking very brown, wasn't looking very good. And I was like, do I go, because they had a few of them. I was like, do I go for the really gorgeous one? Or I was like, do I go for this little one that's not looking very good? So I decided to go for the one that wasn't looking as good in the hope that it might start doing better things for me. And since I've had it, it has given me this beautiful new leaf. So I'm glad it's off to a good start. I'm obviously just monitoring it very carefully. There haven't been any signs of pests or anything like that, but I also know that it's early days and I do just need to keep monitoring it. Again, predatory mites, all that sort of stuff. And I've also just seen, what's that behind it? It's a propagation box of some sort. I have a feeling, let's open it up and have a look. Ah, yeah, okay, so these are some Philodendron Milano Chrysum wet sticks that I decided to propagate. Um, they haven't been in there. How long have they been in there? Maybe a month or so, and as you can see, no movement so far. Um, but yeah, I'll just keep them there. I feel like that's a good spot for them. Again, they get lots of light. It's fairly, fairly warm up here. I'm on a top floor flat, so I do get the warmth from everyone below, which, I mean, although it's not like drastic warmth, I kind of think of it as like a little heat mat. Um, and then, so this cactus that I also picked up in Tesco, I actually don't know what this is. Like my instinct wants to jump in and say blue matillo, but I think that's probably just a bit standard. If anybody knows what this cactus is, then please do let me know. But I'm not a mega, like, mega cactusy person. I have got quite a few cacti and succulents, but as you can probably tell, I'm usually more of a foliage person than a succulent person. But I did just really like this one, and I thought it looked really, really cute. I liked its little pot, and it was only a few quid as well, and oh, I caved. I caved. Um, but yes, again, I think it will be very happy there and it looks very nice on my new shelf. And then up here, oh my goodness, this plant, I'm just going to need to turn her a little bit so that you can fully appreciate her. This is my variegated euphorbia and I adore this plant. She has got so big. And this section here, like if you look at her variegation there, I just love the contrast between the dark and the light. And she just, she's given me no grief again in the time that I've had her. She's been very easy to keep. I'm very happy that she's finally branching for me as well. And I know I don't really need to have her up high. I don't really know why I've put her on the top shelf, but she is very, very spiky. So I think just for Yoli's sake, not that Yoli really pays any attention to the plants, but for Yoli, sake I think it's probably safer to have her raised off the floor and then the one next to it so we're kind of coming on to the hanging plants now the one next to it isn't looking very happy this is a plant that I've actually only had for three or four days it's a piper sylvaticum and I got this one from grow tropicals and it arrived looking super 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 healthy there was nothing wrong with it it looked really full and plump and succulent and I know that Piper can be incredibly dramatic plants. I've tried to propagate them before with no success and I'm fully aware that they can be very dramatic, but this one's going very curly and I'm like, I don't wanna lose it. I also know that it probably is more suited to be grown on a moss pole as opposed to a hanger, but I was just like, I don't wanna, 
I don't want to mess with its roots yet. I don't want to start doing things to this plant while it's still adjusting to my home. So I thought I would just leave it like this for now. I did take a look at the roots and the roots looked absolutely fine. They looked really healthy. I think maybe just because my order was delayed for a day. So it was obviously in transit for a little bit longer than it was meant to be. It's just looking a little bit unhappy at the moment. So yeah, I just have a look. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it could probably do with the water. It might just be a watering thing. Maybe it just needs a good drink, but it did feel quite wet when I got it. So I was just a little bit tentative when it came to watering it again. Now I'm going to have to get a chair and take you up to the ones hanging because they are obviously a little bit more difficult to reach. I know some of you are asking about how I water my hanging plants and I do actually get a chair and take them all down to water them. I personally don't mind doing that. I know that might seem like effort, but I don't mind doing that at all. But yeah, I will get a chair and I will take you through them and the ones on the fridge. I actually decided to make this video into a part one and part two, just because believe it or not, this is only the halfway point and there's still a lot to show you, but I hope you're enjoying it so far and I will link part two down below.